everybody welcome back to another episode of the vile files going deeper edition and boy is this a special one i know you're all excited and so many people are probably tuning in maybe for the first time on this show and we welcome you you know i'm i'm, I'm like the the pastor or the priest on easter you know hey thanks for coming to church sinners but no truly we are so glad that you are here uh, we are excited for you to hear uh, this episode raven was so generous with her her time um to share this story which was incredibly difficult for her she has been through a lot uh and our hearts go out to her but we still very much appreciate her giving us the tea and just being it, it's it was great our our jaws were dropped there's a lot to get into we can't not wait for you to hear this episode uh, for those of you, I also just want to introduce uh, Allie and Amanda. They're, hey. they're always with us. Hello. Ladies, how you doing? Good. We're thriving. Bopping, vibing. Bopping. So excited for this episode to be uh, out. So excited. Uh, I know we have some topics to d discuss before we get to Raven. Also, this is kind of a big episode. We figure we might as well just have this be the episode where we, we have... We've talked about a man named Derek in the room. Uh, he's a very important part of this team. Uh, he's been working on this show for ooh, years. Wow, now longer than us. Has he? Derek, yeah. has it been? Anyway, Derek has a mic now. Say hi, Derek. We're not silencing men anymore. Yeah, we're not. Si <laughs> we, we're not silencing men anymore. We've put a stop to that. You know, against my will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a while. I think before Ellie and Amanda. Here's what I want to do right now. Um, thanks for that, Derek. Uh, you can be quiet now. Uh, <laughs> Respectfully, shut the, fuck up. shut the fuck up. Um, I want to talk about Derek while he's here. Mm. Oh, wait, this is cute. Yeah. Derek is a special man, and I look forward to you guys getting to know him. He is one of those people who uh, has a lot to say, but chooses not to say it often. He's a sweet soul. His patience is infinite. He follows a lot of sort of semi-niche animal accounts on Instagram and will update me regularly about various zoo animals across the world. He's a, a gentle, nuanced, yeah. dynamic person. And I person. feel like I only know 10% of Derek. Yeah, that's the tip of the iceberg. He's a highly intelligent person. He yeah. knows a lot about everything. He is dedicated to the things he's passionate about, and I'm lucky to know that he's passionate about this show. What about Derek did you first say, you know what, I'm going to mooch you. Mooch you? you yeah. Mean, you mean poach him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna smooch you, Derek. <laughs> no, isn't mooch the same as poach? Oh, I mean, I don't know. By the time I uh, decided to take Derek from his previous employer, I, you know, was fully invested. He was, he was an integral part of the show, so it was kind of a no-brainer. But you said there's a man in the white van named Derek who I kidnapped, and uh, I'm taking him to my show. He does like to wear a, a Hawaiian shirt a lot. Yeah, you know. yeah. Gets he has his a signature, on. signature style. He just always made himself available. He was always is a. It was what can I do, not what do I have to do, and I love that about him. Derek is a yes man. Well, yeah. he's not in a way where he's not a pushover. No, but like he was just yeah. It's like what can I do? He wants to make people around him successful. You're he loves a, hard. You're a dreamer. He's a doer, and you're an ideal <laughs> pairing. Is I he feel my, like Mick is, is he like... my Wozniak? <laughs> Are you my Wozniak, Derek? I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Okay. Just, just don't boot me I out later. A better finish than they had. If you guys were gonna share the same first name, would you want to both go by Nick or both go by Derek? I'd rather be Derek. Derek Vial has a ring to it. Derek's a cool name. Sexier than Nick. Do you want to do a poll? Do yeah. What what's think? a sexier <laughs> name? Nick or Derek? Yeah. Let's do a poll on Instagram. All right. I'll poll the people. Speaking of polls, have you guys seen the new Barney? Oh my god. Illustration. Uh. Y yeah. Wow. It's crazy. They got why is Barney look like he's on drugs now? And it's too well, much. The, first, the older Barney looks a little sleepy. Yeah. It's like it's like older Barney was on like downers <laughs> and, and newer Barney's on uppers. Uppers. <laughs> <laughs> and we needed a middle. And we, we are didn't, they are they bringing the show back? It, it's like a new yeah, it's a new type of it's like Barney and Blank. New, is it gonna be on like it because it was on like wasn't it on like PBS? Like because now it's an yeah. animated series. That's the difference. Like this used to be a man in a suit. Oh, okay, and they're now not, it's animated. Not having a man in a suit. Well, 
There well, might be a reason why. Well, let's talk about that man who was in the suit because I did, did a bit of a deep drive. Okay, so there was that's him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. So there, like were, a, there was a lot of controversy surrounding normal Barney. Normal chap, just a guy. Oh, David. Oh, David. So there was like a lot of what, controversy. Did, did he do something? Well, <laughs> just around Barney as a whole. So like for the Barney franchise, there were like all these rumors about drugs, etc. The guy who voiced Barney was the one who was, I think, potentially on drugs. We don't. Gotcha, gotcha, there's gotcha. a lot going on. The Bob guy West. who voiced Barney is not the same guy who played Barney. No. Okay. Yeah. No. So the voice behind Barney is having some speculation. But the man who was in the suit oh. is this guy. We did um, a deep dive, and he's a tantric masseuse who fucks his clients for the low, low <laughs> price of three hundred and fifty dollars. What do you mean he fucks his clients? Just wait. So let me just maybe read a clip from his website. I began studying tantra at the tender age of twenty. I've been very fortunate to study Tantra in other countries and learn from some of the most profound Tantra masters. I practice White Lotus Tantra, which focuses on the spirituality of a person. I am also trained as a Swedish massage therapist and a Reiki practitioner, in which I embody all techniques in my sessions. As your Kundalini, Kundalini, Kundalini God rises <laughs> and your sexual energy begins its upward journey through your chakras, your spirit becomes the beacon lighting the pathway to a very enlightened and deeper connection with the divine universal energy. So that's how he describes it. An article that Vice did about him um, <laughs> uh, described that, uh, you know, a full centric session of Tantra Massage uh, with the specialist and spiritual healer David lasts three to four hours and costs $350. For that price, female clients... The only kind he accepts can expect to receive a ritual bath, chakra balancing, and a massage. Also on the menu, cosmic mind blowing blowing orgasms. <laughs> um, That's on. What do you get? Is there like a money back guarantee? If it's not mind blowing, do you yeah. get it back? Well, so like, it's yeah. three or four hours of work. So to get you to that spot, he. So the, I guess the basic philosophy of Tantra is that all women are goddesses, and when touching the goddess or being intimate with the goddess, you should also understand you're touching the hand of God and her spiritual connection with God. The more you understand how much of a goddess you are and being able to live your life as a goddess, you radiate that energy, and it's that, that's the energy you will attract. Mm. So this is, this is, again, this is what David's saying is about this himself. Legal? <laughs> is Barney a sex worker? Well, Barney's not, but... David? David might be. Is this if sex you're, work? If you're paying. Yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> he talks about the, I think the, the, the vocabulary used. And also to be like, to be fair, like I know like Tantra is a tradition that exists all around the world. And like, this is, you know, this is a very limited perspective on it. So this is in no way disrespectful, um, no shade to the beautiful medium and art form and practice that that is. We're just, we're just talking about this Marty man because we're just talking <laughs> about David. stuff like when the lingam, penis and the yoni vagina <laughs> meet there's a certain energy that takes place on the body that hands alone cannot create so even through g-spot massage it's not the same energy that flows so he's like he's like you need to let me fuck you basically <laughs> i gotta sling him my lingam and yo yoni <laughs> <laughs> it's also like yoni's an unhinged name but i have been saying for a long time like we need a different vaginas too clinical pussies too derogatory crude. derogatory yeah it's like very crude like you got to be in a real mood to say pussy we need a different word yoni i don't know if yoni is it Ooh, yeah <laughs> Sounds what if we came into work like two days from now and Amanda so and I had like matching childish. Yoni tattoos? What's the tattoo of? It just says the word Yoni? Yeah. <laughs> like what if we just got matching? I'd be great. I mean, it'd be content for me. I don't. Okay. We'll I'll... get Yoni lip tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> well, Godspeed, Barney, old Barney. Yeah. And I'm glad maybe maybe it's best that he's an animated character now. Yeah. I d and I d to be clear, like. I Why is the guy who had to leave, like play? you know, a, a stuffed dinosaur and played with kids ended up being <laughs> him. Like, yeah. why? Well, okay, so I, I think the point that could be made that this is above board is that he's always been a man who's been deeply focused on connection and love. Mm. And that earlier yeah. in his career, that looked like being kids. a joyful, <laughs> a joyful uh -huh. presence on a set. Yeah. And from there... He realized he, that energy, that joyful Wasn't energy, enough. became oh, specialized <laughs> later. Yoni, <laughs> show, me, show me your yoni. 
Lingham. Anyway, there's a new Barney coming out. Uh, wild stuff. How's my skin looking? Uh, supple. Lovely. Right? Supple. supple. Right. Young. You know what my Fresh. skin is like in the winter? Dry. You know what I do about it? Osea. Because Osea yeah. has this Andaria algae body butter. And that's how I stay so hydrated in the winter cold months. I've never seen your skin dry, Ellie. And you want to know why? Osea. Correct. Yeah. Why do you think I look like a supple, youthful god? Osea? Osea. So glad we covered our bases. Glad no one's confused. Um, and we're going to ask nice me my skin cure. Um, here's my skin care routine. My favorite Osea product right now because it's hard to pick, is the Ocean Cleanser. I really like it. I have combination oily skin. It does an amazing job of like cleaning my T-zone, which is where like oil builds up, but then also not being too drying on my cheeks. It genuinely, like it's one of those th- like cleansers where it's like, I just feel clean after, but not like stripped away. And like it visit, like your skin will feel brighter. It is so awesome. I miss the, my biggest complaint about my like staying over at my boyfriend's house is not using my Ocean Cleanser because it is truly that good. I also, I don't know if this is other people's issue. I do not remember to put lotion on after I get out of the shower. I realized mm-hmm. that started like in college. And I have, Osea is single-handedly responsible for me having moisturized elbows, knees, and everything else because they have an insanely awesome Undaria algae body butter in addition to their um, oil. It's, it's so like good. They cover all your bases from do, your face really to like their, your body. I like, I like their oil. Yeah, Their oil really, is really yeah. good. Osea has got you covered. And right now we have a special discount just for our listeners. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code TVF at oceamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. So head to oceamalibu.com. That's O-S-E-A malibu.com and use code TVF for 10% off. I have been using AG1 for uh, years now, and I love it. Here's the thing. It tastes great. I want to start there. It is a delicious drink that I just generally enjoy quenching my thirst with. Totally. If I'm like, I don't want to have a soda or like a really sugary yeah, lemonade you just around want, like, lunch. You know, there's somebody wants some flavor. Yeah. You just do. I'm just one of those people that finds water exhausting, and I like a little taste in my beverage. I'm tired of all the sugar and crap that goes into all these things. And all, even those, those like juices out there that claim to be healthy for you, when you turn on the label, they have more sugar. AG1 by Athletic Greens has so many wonderful nutrients and vitamins, and it's a great way to get the nutrients you need without taking all the vitamins and things like that. If you are looking for better gut health, if you're looking for more energy, if you're looking to sleep better, if you're looking for higher quality hair, these are all things I've experienced by being an AG1 customer by Athletic Greens and drinking it on the daily I can't say enough good things about it. New habits are so hard to form. The nice thing about AG1 is that it's a habit that like is easy to build because it's like gratifying. Like it's really easy to just be like, I'm putting a scoop in. I know I'm getting like this awesome like nutritional foundation drink and bada bing, bada boom. Like that's an easy way to take care of my body and show up for myself and without using too much energy. So I think great habits make a part of your life. The thing about AG1 is it's something you can enjoy every day. And you can be like, I'm tasting it, a delicious drink, and also be putting things in your body that are helping you feel better, uh, be better, be healthier. It's like a win-win. AG1's got you. It's They got you. Get on the AG1 train. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. A year supply? Oh, go of to athleticgreens.com slash vialfiles. That's V-I-A-L-L-F-I-L-E-S. That's athleticgreens.com slash V-I-A-L-L. F-I-L-E-S. Check it out. You won't regret it. Trust us. Athletic Greens AG1 has you covered. Get ready to feel great. Um, sweet. Speaking of wild stuff, Super Bowl halftime show. Uh, oh my God. Rihanna Did you know she was effortless- pregnant right away? Uh, no. I don't, I don't uh, have opinions on whether women are pregnant or not. Totally. Especially like postpartum because like, you know, it's not like you... It is not my job to wonder if someone is pregnant. They will tell me. <laughs> that's, that's it. I see. I, I was like, oh. I immediately thought she was pregnant. Yeah, I was like, oh, Rihanna's pregnant again. Yeah. yeah. Saying, and I, I didn't know it was a reveal. I was just like, oh, she's, yeah. she's been pregnant? Well, because I, I pulled up originally because I got the years wrong. And I guess she had given birth or announced something like in January, but that was January of last year. So, and then I was like, oh, she gave birth in May. And I was just, and then I got my years mixed up. And so I was like, oh, she already announced it. And then I was like, oh, no, that was of last year. She is effortlessly cool. 
Mm-hmm. Oh my I've god! I've never seen. I mean, because like you know, she, like she wasn't like working. I'm sure she was working up a sweat. I mean, everything she was doing looked uh, uh, was difficult and, and was in sync. But like she's just effortless. It effortless. looks effortless, and it looks very cool. She just is cool. Like some people just have coolness. She is one of them. She has the X factor. Am I the only one? And a perfect performance. I, this you're, is. You're, there are some people sad about songs she didn't play. I. Mm. Where was Shut Up and Drive? Where was Disturbia? She has too many good songs. Every song that played, I was like, fuck yeah. But she only did Umbrella from Good Girl Gone Bad. And I'm like, that was, oh, that was like a really, imp- that was a signature era for her. Yeah, when you're that much of an icon, I mean, listen, all, all, to me, all it says is that she's been so successful that she can't, she's always going to disappoint people by the things that she doesn't play, which is a, much better place to be in than people being like, can you just play the one song we fucking and I, like? I don't feel I don't feel entitled to it, but like if she'd played Ponder Replay, I would have freaked the fuck out. Mm. Like, do you agree that it would have been a moment? It would have been. Uh, yeah, it would have been great. I was satisfied. She left me uh, <laughs> satisfied as a viewer, just like. Oh, I thought uh, you were gonna describe just like David. Yeah, like David. Just like David. Does. David. She did to tried, his clients. Yeah. Yeah. You were I, you were the different, goddess. Different. And... I was the goddess. <laughs> I mean, different. Again, I was in my living room. You know, everything was fine. But I, Rihanna, I was a, did not need to use any. Physical I was a touch. satisfied customer yeah. in that moment, so mm. I, I have no complaints. Okay, but you know who's not a satisfied customer? Megan Fox. Did this break up. Well, okay, why are they fighting over Instagram? There was uh, an article that came out truly forty minutes ago that they MGK and Megan Fox left a couple's counselor building separately. Mm. Just now. So it seems like that's a little intrusive. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those things. Fucking weird. It does feel a little icky. Can we just let people go to couples therapy? Good for them for going couples therapy. Yeah. Well, I guess I view it. I think it's like a positive thing. I guess there's so much that's intrusive. That's also fucking intrusive to like. Yeah. You just like yeah, everything's so intrusive. You live in a world where everyone feels entitled. Wasn't there? Didn't she made kind of cryptic mentions about infidelity? Yeah, she quoted some lemonade lyrics. Uh, which it's like I can taste the dishonesty on your breath. Hold on, let me pull up the exact Ooh. one. Uh, yikes! I hear you, Meg. Megan, I hear you. You can taste the dishonesty; it's all over your breath. She posted that. Yeah, was a comment. Or so she posts. So she posted. She made an Instagram post right, so that I, she since deleted. I got a question for you. That was her caption. I got a question for you. And, and if she since deleted, maybe it was a reactive. Okay, fine. We we, we react. We can regret. But let's say your partner fucks up. Let's say they cheat on you. Uh, you're a public figure. Like, do you, what, what do you owe uh, your partner? And obviously this is uh, appropriate for the theme of this show. What's appropriate in terms of sparing them the public humi- humiliation? And if you're going to like, if you're going to give details about their behavior, are you better off just like explaining it in context rather than like breadcrumbing people? Like what? Is there, an, is there a right thing to do in that moment? Or is it just kind of like, hey, Megan has the right to feel how she feels and, and she's just going to respond? Like, I, do we, well, should we have opinions on how productive uh, this type of behavior is? I think that's what's so hard about messy situations like this is like when someone is hitting you with like bonkers, crazy shit, like fucking somebody else when you are in a loving, committed relationship. When you're engaged, yeah. bonkers, they're crazy. engaged. And so it's like, how much do we expect other people to be like, getting crazy shit thrown at them and like reacting and handling it like a sane person, you know? No, totally. Yeah. No, I, 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 I empathize. It's just like, but like, I think as an audience, like sometimes as an audience will be like, Oh, well that's, I don't know. That's more than I needed to know or something. Mm. You know, it's just like the audience, sometimes we decide, Oh, well that's, that's, that's between them or that's private. We'll want people to give us tea and then judge them for giving us, us tea. Right. Sometimes mm. in a way. Mm-hmm. you know right or like we'll be so obsessed with this relationship and so info focused on like the love story of it all and tracking their every move and every time they make out in a public place and then it's like once it sours does that just following that relationship that closely or like the two separate entities become kind of fucked up yeah Ooh. Ooh. do you think they make it they're well, in she, couples therapy right away she deleted him off the. it wasn't just the post she deleted him off instagram and yeah, well, she, that almost sounds like reactive mm-hmm yeah, because then she followed Did Timothy she Chalamet, because Harry she Styles, archive? and Eminem, who is famously <laughs> beefs with MGK. Oh, so this is very much, she found out whatever he did. This was her, like, keying the car. This yeah. was her, like, Carrie Underwood <laughs> before he so she, she, can, she can unfollow these people and she can delete comments, but she can't go back and repost 
shit that she deleted of them. Well, did she delete or did she archive? That is the question. Ooh. Is she holding out hope? Oh, but if you archived it, isn't what's the, like? Are you really going to put that shit back up? Yeah, and, and I with guess because people that's will like, notice. I've learned the power of repair this year more than anything else. I was at my darkest hour. I thought this relationship was unsalvageable, but through the grace of God and therapy, like yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Fine, but sure. But like, wouldn't you want to just like then focus on the future rather than the past? I say this with confidence, but uh, if uh, Instagram is also like a, it's a, it's a scrapbook. You know, yeah. it's a photo album of memories, and it, whatever Sheen Gun Kelly might have done. She's now going to look back on, on a memory that she thought was existed, and now it's, it means something completely different. Do you so guys have of photos might, of your exes on your Instagrams? Uh, I think technically Vanessa's still on mine, mm. buried way down. And I actually thought of going back and deleting it, but I was just too fucking lazy. I do. Mm. Yeah, I don't really think it means all that much. It, all just, it just depends on, on the people or the relationship. I mean, again, like I've been either single or with Natalie for so long that anyone on there, it's like... It would take me an hour. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's literally buried. Uh, like 300, 400 some posts earlier. Do you take it as a red flag if you started seeing someone and they have their exes on their Instagram? Let's say it's like not from recent. Let's say it's from like a year plus. Not really. It's part of their life. Yeah. Because in some ways I think it's a green flag because I feel like there's a big thing of people being upset that their partner won't post them on social media and feeling like that's kind of sus. Mm. Maybe. I would love for someone to post me on social media. That'd be fun. Yeah, my boyfriend hasn't once posted, ah! and that's one of those things he where you can't say shit about it. There's no way to say that without looking like uh, I would like why? to be put on your grid because he doesn't use Instagram that much. Like, it's not like a thing he does. Like, oh, how much does he use Instagram? Like, he'll post like maybe once a year, oh, maybe twice okay. a year. Then, yeah, but I'm still like, it's 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 a no win situation because okay. you can't on mine. You can't admit yeah. that you care about that kind of thing. Sure, why not? Why can't you admit anything in a relationship? Why aren't all feelings valid? You're not expecting him to do anything. Why can't you just say, "Hey, listen, if I'm being honest, like, and I know why you don't because you don't post a year, but like, sometimes I just wish you would or find a new like." I think you know we get too afraid to express our feelings in relationships. And if what's the point of being in a relationship if you can't be vulnerable with your partner? I think it's less that I feel entitled and I'm like, why haven't you posted more? Like, it would be so lovely and nice for you to post. Like, I would just, it would be great if you did post like a nice, sure. like, but I why can't see... you even just have the conversation about the feeling? Well, because then if it's like, if it's a nice thing that you want them to do, the second you ask them to do it, it kind of loses. She wants it to be his idea. Like... I mean, I get it. Yes. But wouldn't you rather just feel more connected? It's yeah, it's not. I don't think about it that much. I'm just like, oh, my God, no, no, no. I, I just I, remembered I, that. I, I, and it I, irks know, me. I know you're not like <laughs> losing your mind over it, but I'm just I'm more talking about the idea of. Of whatever you're feeling, being able to communicate that with your partner without judgment or frustration, just to talk. Hey, I feel this. I don't even know what I'm feeling. I don't even know what it means. But can we talk about it? And then you work through it and then maybe they respond in kind or whatever it is. Well, isn't that better than just like hoping that oh, they make sure. a move or they do something that you would like? I think it's that I'm judging myself because I don't know that I'm like fully sure whether I think it's like I accept that it's how I feel and I'm not judging like but I, I don't know if that's an impulse that I want to like validate and push on. Yeah, I hear you. I just don't I don't I just like but it's a good be, point. being a mind reader is not a love language. I don't understand why we feel the need to reward our partners for like reading our minds. And I understand there's paying attention to the small things and, 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 and initiative being, and, and having initiative, but also just a lot like also, but our feelings change and the things we want change. And sometimes in this particular case, he, ha he would have no reason to like clearly Instagram isn't a priority for him. So why, why do you be thinking about how you might feel about it type of thing? Yeah. But you've acknowledged and, and thank you for acknowledging it, that it would, like it would be cool if he just like figured it out. <laughs> totally. Rather well, I than... guess that's the thing where it's like what someone views as mind reading, the other person just views as like listening. And maybe you can have a conversation about that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Anyway, a couple housekeeping notes before we get to Raven. Don't forget tonight, Better Date Than Never, 9 p.m. Eastern. If you haven't checked it out, it is a live show all about dating and relationships. We have people come in and talk about their stories. They have people come in and call in and talk about dates they're going on. We break down dates. It's all about dating. It's a community of people just like bouncing off ideas. It's live. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern. You have to download the AMP app the details in our show description if you haven't checked it out yet i highly encourage you to do it's super fun you're we're creating a community of daters and if you feel a little bit frustrated and alone when it comes to your dating life join our community it's a ton of fun 
A lot of best practices are shared. It's great. It's enjoyable. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at castme.com, cast with a K. Also, one programming note this episode. So uh, if you're familiar with this show, we do texting office hours with our guests all the time. Uh, but we had a caller come in after we recorded with Raven that we thought was so like on the nose of this episode when it comes to infidelity and cheating and telling friends and, and kind of the lies that happen uh, when the cheating ripple is going, the ripple effect of cheating and how it plays into role of all these relationships. So we inserted that into our texting office hours. We also recorded one with Raven that we are going to play at the end of our interview with Raven. So it's a long episode. Stick around again. And if you love, if you're new to the show, if you love these texting office hours, if you love hearing people's dating stories and feedback and things like that, we have a whole episode every Monday ask nick where people call in and share their stories every Wednesday on our going deeper episodes. We have these texting office hours. So uh, I hope that you subscribe and tell your friends again, if you're new to the show, we're doing great things, obviously. Please don't fire me for saying this, but I suspect there are some people who are listening who are like kind of planning on plugging their nose through the nick of this interview and just want to listen to Raven. Totally. And so I think if you're- Plugging their nose. (laughs) Just like metaphorically. You got a bad taste. You've never (laughs) once smelled bad in your life that I know of. Yeah. But they're enduring- (laughs) <laughs> they're enduring <laughs> you to get to raven yeah. and if you are one of those people i will say i did not know what to think of you before working for you and before listening to the show i will say i don't know that i came in with particularly positive associations i was very Wait, pleasantly what? surprised when you interview for this job well you no pretended to no like i me? said before i listened to the show i was very pleasantly <laughs> surprised when i actually listened to the show for the first time i was like oh, oh before, damn before, okay. against all odds this man has some very good things to say and so <laughs> i'm just saying we are. as a uh i guess as a hater <laughs> this is a really interesting episode to be very honest yeah over two years into her employment <laughs> amanda admits I've never once to said hating any- nick yeah. i'm doing it in service i am speaking to the people yeah, not- who are maybe feeling that way uh, thank you yeah <laughs> I'm going to cry. I have leaving here for therapy. Derek, do you have any thoughts that you want to share just in general about life, about this upcoming interview, like any, anything you want to just say? You know, I'm honestly really hung up on the Barney stuff. Yeah. Do you think he makes them sing clean up, clean up after a session? (laughs) (laughs) Clean up, clean clean up. up, everybody. Do you think it's more than 350 if they ask him to wear the suit? How many of them know that he did that? All That's of them. Good question. That's the only way he has client base. You I, think so? What? Yeah. Apparently. No. Wait, the Vice article was like. Does he, he have like a Yelp page? Like what are people's reviews? Well, apparently there's word of mouth and Tinder, which I've, to be fair, when I was on Tinder, you see some entrepreneurs. So in their do you think there's a Barney photo on his Tinder profile? Does he have a LinkedIn? Well, that's the question. Would women be more or less interested in having sex with this man i guarantee a lot of people are into it less would be interested but the ones interested would be very much willing to spend the money because they'd have a kink repeat clients yeah Hmm. that's the price point thanks for uh, listening to us unplug your noses now unplug your noses raven's about to begin her journey of honesty and vulnerability and again we want to thank raven for her time it's not easy to talk about the things that she talked about. Um, I know we love bringing you guys some juicy and fun tea and things like that, but this shit was hard for her to talk about. And whatever you think of Raven or SK, remember to be kind and remember uh, it doesn't do you any good going to people's pages and saying mean shit and things like that. But send uh, Raven your love and support and and bring her joy and and thank her for all the things that she's done in her honesty and her vulnerability. Again, this shit is really hard to talk about. And so make sure you do that. Enjoy the episode. We'll see you next week on Monday. Ask Nick. And we'll also we'll see you tonight on Better Date Than Never. Next week, we have Francesca Farago for all you uh, Netflix uh, kind of love is blind, too hot to handle. Uh, we'll have her talking about uh, Perfect, Perfect Match, Match, which Bartise from which Bartise the same is season in, is on. You know, So be sure to check that out if you haven't watched it. It's really actually, it's a really good show. It has hooked me. It's good. I'm yeah. very into it. Yeah. So we'll be talking with Francesca next week. Uh, be sure to check that out. You do not want to miss that. Let's get to Raven. Raven, welcome. Hello. Thanks we're, for having me. Well, we're, we're, we're grateful for you to be here. <laughs> me? <laughs> How, how's your heart, Raven? Um, it's getting there. Getting there. You know, to be completely honest, it's... On a scale of on one it. to ten, zero being completely shattered and broken, and one being in love and joyful, where, where would you rate your heart? From zero to ten? Zero to ten. Or one, I don't know. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll give myself like a strong 6.5 right now. Okay, so we're on the, we're on the way up. Yeah. We're over the hump, so we're to speak. We're over the hump, yeah, for sure. Well, that's good. Uh, not that we want you to relive bad memories, but the people want to know. Yeah. And then I feel like there's a lot, a lot, so many unanswered questions that re- as it relates to your relationship with SK. Yeah. And if you would be so kind, we'd love to go take that emotional journey with you. And, uh, and, and let's think of this as like a cleansing episode. Yeah. Hopefully by the time we're all done with, with this episode, we will be fully done with, with SK. The whole story. The yeah. whole story. It's an exorcism. So, yeah. We'll it's like the move saging on. of the soul. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's flush it down the toilet, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we come up with more analogies for this? We can. Yeah. <laughs> this is my life, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Flush it down to get it. So last time we talked to you, we had the pleasure of talking to you via Zoom. M- so much nicer to have you in person. Oh my god, thank you. Uh, and lovely just to meet you in general. But uh, I I distinctly remember thinking of you as like of all the couples that came from that season, I found myself like liking you guys the most and you know not to necessarily compare the others and and certainly you know you guys at, at that point i don't even think were you were even engaged let alone married yeah. at the time and there were but i just you know with these types of shows sometimes you know everyone kind of has a different path but there's certainly pressures you know both internally and externally and while you know while i was never on love is blind i i you know being on the bachelor it's not like even pressure necessarily comes directly from producers, but like you, you kind of know the assignment in your head. And so, you know, I just kind of, I really respected what it seemed like you and SK kind of, despite being in this world, you know, following your own path, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, maybe cause even though you didn't get it, you know, married and, and I know SK said no, but the fact that you guys were to an item and together by the time we talked, I was like, you know what? I, I really respect this approach. And it seemed like a healthy and mature conversation. And you talked about how happy you were. I think we even have a clip uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to play just to bring us back to that moment. <laughs> and you're still together? Yeah, okay. we're still together. So it's been a while now. Um, yeah, how and... long? Now? Like, how long has this relationship been going on? Ooh, like over a year um pretty much since filming after filming you know we had a weird space for a while he i think like within that week um had to move to california so we definitely had like a long transition period um where we like we still talked but i don't i think it's been like a little over a year that we were officially like okay like you know we're going to be official and move forward um, and kind of pick up where we left off. But there is so much love there. And like, he is literally my best friend. So yeah, we've been making it work between uh, Texas and California. So. That's awesome. A uh, couple questions on that. One, what advice do you have for anyone trying to make a long distance relationship work? Ooh, it, it, it. I think go on love is blind. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but really like what makes it work for us is that we have such a strong foundation that's really like based in communication. Mm -hmm. So that I feel like is essentially what you need for a long distance relationship. I trust him so much. And I also know that like we have such good communication skills between each other that if something's wrong or someone needs a little bit extra like poured into them or having a rough week like we can be that for each other so i think for me what i have always looked for in a relationship is like a really strong partnership Mm -hmm. you know and we really have that (laughs) oh i'm I'm sorry no it's okay well yeah obviously that's an emotional (laughs) it's emotional to watch yeah how does that make you feel um it just really brings me back to like, I really felt like that. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, you know, we had filmed so long ago. It was nice to kind of like finally talk about our story because like you said, it was so different, especially mm-hmm. than everyone else's. And it was something we were really proud of. You know, we had some different circumstances like that made our relationship different culturally, the school thing, having to move. That was all 
against us and we still like made something really, really cool work. And like I was just so proud of us and like super in love. So to watch that, I'm like, dang, like I, I really was like under a guy's, you know. Spell. I was under a s- l- witchcraft. I'm glad Ellie and Amanda suggested that we play that. Not, you know, not to necessarily bring back mm-hmm. uh, sad memories, but that was, well, what was it? November. Yeah. And like a week or two later, that's when shit hit the fan. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a couple of women started coming forward via TikTok or social media or whatever. And, and making accusations and claims that they had some kind of relationship with SK. You know, I know what it's like to have trust someone and only to realize that maybe I shouldn't have. And if you're anyone who's ever been in that position, and I'm curious what you think, but there's kind of this like internal struggle of, you know, almost like you don't want to go against what you thought you felt, you know, like I said, I trust them. I put it out there. I do trust them. And so if I say I trust this person, these are the moments where I need to show them I trust them, especially, you know, when things come forward and, you know, and we live in a world where, you know, people do, you know, love, uh, love some clout, you know, and they love attention. And that's usually kind of the first response to someone's defense in these type of scenarios. But I'd love if you're, if you're willing to, to kind of bring us into that room and that time, wherever you were when you first found out about these rumors about SK having alleged relationships with other women. Yeah, so like you said, it kind of all came at different times with different women, but it started with um, one girl who he'd actually met in San Francisco. And when I found out about it, I found out with everyone else on TikTok. Um, And this was actually... um, right before Thanksgiving and he was at school and I was in Dallas and yeah, just randomly, I want to say it was like early in the afternoon and just my phone started going crazy. Everyone sending it to me. Did you see this? And so, you know, I watched it a few times. She had some pictures and messages on there. I confirmed that it was actually like some of the same pictures he had sent me. So I knew it was real. When you say pictures he sent you, what do you mean? So um, in one of those conversations, and again, this is with the first girl that he met in San Francisco on Hinge. He was in Austin during these pictures that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. This was, I want to say, March. It was before my birthday. And I had just come back from Austin with him. We went to South by Southwest. He actually lived in Austin for a while. And so I had come back from Austin and he was just like sending me pictures. He went on the lake with his brother, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, I wish we would have had time to do that, whatever. Fast forward, she posts the same pictures he had sent me. Oh, so like the same background, same, same lake. Exact, type, same yeah. exact thing. And like the same like update on my day. Yeah. Like, same same I went doing with my brother. So glad he's updating multiple Copy people. Copy and paste. And it, it was literally verbatim, the same exact selfie, the same exact words. Oh. He basically could have put you in a group chat. And here I am thinking, like I just said in the clip, like I thought we had the strongest foundation. Like we were coming from a place like I trusted him with anything, like in everything. So I never would have thought to me. It's like you feel the same way about us. You're talking to us the same way. He actually invited her to Austin. So I'm like, okay, you literally we just went to Austin. He stayed. Then you're going to turn around and fly another girl out. Um, and it it ended up not happening, and that was kind of his saving grace for not me forgiving him for this first thing that came out. I didn't like forgive him for it, but I was like, okay, it was just a hinge date. You know, he didn't have much to, not much came of it. The girl never went to Austin, so it was a lot of hurtful words, yeah. And it was hard to see like he was entertaining someone with like the same exact information he was giving to me and I'm someone he's known for a long time. So what did he first say when this came out? Did he own up to it? A little, not really. Um, which will, What do you mean by a little, not really? Yeah. Um, do you remember like his exact like phrasing or response at first? 
it's funny because this is a thread throughout it. Anytime there would be like a moment like this, there'd always be lots of hesitation. And at this point, he didn't answer the phone for a while. And I so knew. He just went dark on you. Yeah, for a little. Not like for. mini ghosted. A mini ghost. And I mean, we're like, because we're so good at, we were so good at communicating because we've been long distance for a while now. Like, there's never a time he's not going to answer the phone for me, especially when uh, his whole family was sending this to him too, right? So I think he didn't answer me back for like an hour or two. Okay. But, but that was not the norm in the pattern never. that you had. But every time it something would go kind of, it was always this. He would always kind of go dark for a little bit to get his thoughts together. And this was kind of the start when I started putting the pieces together from every other time he's acted similarly. So when he first, after an hour or two, yeah. what, what was he saying to you? He was like, yeah, it's true. I met this girl on Hinge. We met one time. It wasn't a date. Like I met her out after a club or whatever. You know, I was texting her. I did send her those pictures when I was in Austin. And I'm sorry for that. But all I did, I saw her physically one time. I'm curious, like in your head as you were trying to process this, like what were the two sides of it? Like what were yeah. you kind of going back and forth between in terms of like your, the way you were yeah. making sense of this all? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure this is the part we were kind of talking about this for that's like, People are going to think and say, like, girl, like, you should have known. You should, you know. And yeah, I should have known, you know. But everyone goes through this where, you know, we had never had. And it's not that this was a, a thing in our relationship. I would never really had a feeling. There were little things along the way that I kind of pushed down. But it's not like I had girls DMing me all the time. Oh, I was with your man, you know. And I truly trusted him so much. I mean, by this point, when I'm finding all of this out, we already like have an apartment together. Like we already like do everything together. We already were like making plans to move to LA together. Like, so it's, you know, I'm like, he wouldn't be doing all of this if he wasn't into it. Yeah. You're kind of trying to rationalize. Yeah. I try yeah to, which makes sense. I've, I've been there. Yeah, you know, when you I found out that, like, you know, this is a long time ago that um, I was being cheated on and my, her friend and my best friend's, you know, girlfriend at the time. And she's also a friend was just like, you know, she's cheating on you. And I was just like, you know, like you just, you're inclined, like when you're in a relationship and exactly. you decide, oh, I'm, we trust each other. Like, yeah. Yeah. You think this is the time I'm supposed to have the back of the person I say I love and I'm going to defend their honor. I'm going to defend their character. And, and sometimes those people use that against you. Yes. Yes. Totally. And also I was telling myself, OK, these messages were from March. By this time, it's almost Thanksgiving. It's a few days before Thanksgiving. I'm like, OK, you know, our relationship had honestly progressed so much sure. since i know yeah. but again see i still tell myself things but we were in a far different place by the time it was november and that's oh, that makes sense you know we yeah, had makes grown sense. you, you a lot. think about the progress you made mm -hmm. and how far you've come and then <laughs> you're just like well you know we met on a show and that's fucked up and yeah. and like yeah you yeah i get it you yeah you, you try to find ways to like give them grace. Yes. And benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Benefit of the doubt. Because it never happened before. So I'm like, okay, this was in March. Now it's the end of November. You know, I'm going to ride for you. And that was the conversation that those first three days <laughs> until the next one dropped. <laughs> and then <laughs> the what sequel. happened? And then it just kept bomb. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then what was that like? What, what was going on then? So the second one was far worse. Um, I think the second one, kind of how you touched on like the clout thing. I don't, I mean, of course it was a little, but she was under the guise like, she felt like since the first girl did it, like she felt more inclined, mm -hmm. you know, to come out with her truth, which God bless, because I would have never known. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, by the time the second girl came out on TikTok, he was already back home. So we were together at this point physically um, at our apartment in Dallas. And again, we're just sitting in our kitchen and both of our phones start going crazy. We watch the video. You watched it together? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure we watched it together. Wow. And then, like, what was your Silence. reaction? Like, who spoke? Do you remember who spoke first? Probably me. Silence. Because he does that thing where he's got to go ghost for a little bit and get the lies together. So I, th- I, I don't know why I do this thing, or I did do this thing, where anytime I get upset, I'd, like, go um, in my closet and, like, close the door, like, you know you got to go in a small I've space done that before it's helpful it's helpful you got to go in a small dark space and cry and so he always comes in my closet with me and we lay on the floor and I don't, it just feels more i don't know and um that motherfucker because like he he that's your safe space yeah and then I'm, I can picture it. He gets in there oh. and he cuddles mm. up and he tells you it's okay. <laughs> and then you're probably thinking like, well, this feels right yeah. and normal. Yeah. And I mean, that one was far more damaging. And um, what did he, what was his excuse then? So that one, this was a girl he had had a, quite a long past with. So she, he was able to use that to his advantage because mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff she put in there was from like 2018, 2019, right? And um, so I'm like, okay, you know, that had nothing to do with me. And you guys had filmed and obviously there's gaps between when things are filmed and when things yeah, are aired. Yeah. You know. And even part of it was that right after filming, like I said, we were not a thing. And immediately within maybe maybe a week tops, he went to Europe right after we wrapped, right after our wedding. He went to Europe and I knew we were still cool. Like we still talked every day, but not on a relationship. And this is this is mid-July 2021. So this is way before everything that we've been talking about. Like mid-July, he goes to Europe. He tells me it's with friends. He acts this is the this was really the hurtful part of this part of it was he invites me to Europe with them. He's like, come please. And I'm like, you know, we've been filming so much. I need to get back to work. Like, I just have to go to work. So I don't go to Europe. Come to find out he took her. And do you think he knew you were too busy to say yes? Yes, one hundred percent. I think he just invited me just to invite me, but he knew I wasn't going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, because literally he he invited me, and the trip was like three days later. Like, who can I? I can't do that. One thing about SK, I never thought is that he was stupid. He was a very ne- very smart guy. Never, yeah. And is isn't it funny that he was always like, "I love Raven because she's so smart." I'm like, because you're smarter than me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah. No, it's, I'm so disappointed in the guy. I liked him so much <laughs> when I do. watched the show. Do you, I feel like we talk a lot about whether they end up being true or they're not. Like these kind of TikToks have become more of a common thing of let me expose this person or here are the receipts, whether it's Love, or, Love is Blind, whether it's Bachelor. And I think a, something we talk a lot about is why didn't they just... DM someone privately, like the Susie and Clayton. Why didn't she just reach out to Susie? Why did she have to get her 15 minutes? But you also said, you know, God bless her for posting this because that's the only reason I knew. But do you wish she would have just addressed you individually? 100% because the the outcome would have been the same. Mm -hmm. If she would have sent me these receipts myself, I would have still broken up with him. Yeah, because you're right, because I remember watching that video and I'm, you know, in some ways, I think I feel find myself protective of my reality TV peers, right? Because there are a lot of like, there are a lot of clout chasers yeah. out there and people who come out with stories that have a, you know, a wrinkle of truth, mm-hmm. but not. And I, re- I remember seeing that video. It looked like someone clout chasing. who very much wanted attention. And yeah. so, yeah, they almost like, and two things can be true at the same time. You know, her story can be true and she could have wanted clout, but the part of you that wanted to believe SK, I'm, I'm assuming over kind of emphasize the clout aspect of it as opposed to what parts of her story were true. Yeah, yeah. And also I think what worked to his benefit um, was that when she released this, or come to find out right before, I didn't know this, but right before she released this, they were, they were talking. The two of them were texting back and forth. And she said, um, I want to meet with you, blah, 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 because she lives in Dallas as well. Um, I want to meet with you, X, Y, Z, and he wouldn't meet with her. And then I guess she ghosted, posted it, texted him back and was like, 
I'll take it down if you give me 300K. So she tried to extort him. Yeah. Yeah. At least that's what he told me. Which, yeah. who knows? Yeah. How did you find out he took her to Europe? The pictures. Oh, the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I know it was, again, it was literally a week after the show wrapped. But the part that hurt me was that he told me stories about it, right? He, that you invited me and that you told me it was a group trip, blah, blah, blah. Come to find out after Europe, they extended their trip, stayed together in London a bunch of times. Was he not reaching out to you while he was in Europe? Yeah, he was. He's really good at that. Yeah, he was. What was he doing? Like FaceTiming you? And um, I don't think we FaceTime we FaceTimed while he was there. But yeah, we like we were texting again. This is why we weren't together. So d- it, it was not cheating. This is a, okay, but it was so right lying. The okay. It was shady lying. as shit, but it's not shady. Shady as shit. technically. Yeah, it was it, to me. It was hurtful. It's like by that time we were already like so. And even though we hadn't. We didn't get married. We weren't together. Like, we were so close. You can tell me the truth. He could tell me anything. Like, we would, we told each other everything. So just tell me, like, hey, you know, my ex is about to come on this trip. And I'll say, okay, like, you know, thanks for, I would literally say thanks for letting me know. Instead of a, over a year later, like, learning about it on TikTok. You're in the closet. He yeah. comes in, violates your sanctuary. <laughs> Uh, what, what what was his new story now? Yeah, so his story about the first video from this specific girl was that it was mostly pictures from 2018, that it wasn't cheating because when he took her to Europe, it was right after the show wrapped. Sure. That was his thing. And those were all understandable. My issue was that he lied about how she actually got there. She also, in that TikTok, put a lot of their text messages that were a lot more recent. They had basically still been in communication this whole time. Hmm. Yeah. Did you ever, have you ever spoken with her directly? No, I've never spoken to this girl. I've never seen her. She's never reached out to me, but her best friends actually, once she released a second video, which we haven't talked about, but her best friends actually called me one night. Really? Yeah. Um, while I was home with SK, they called me. It's another couple. They were basically like, we're so sorry this is happening to you. You know, they actually told me like some crazy stuff that this girl was like trying to come take my Pilates classes, like weird stuff. Yeah. Was, yeah. So at that Did point. Did they kind of, like what, what was their energy? Was it kind of warning you about her and him? Um, no, their energy was warning me about her. Her. Yeah, yeah, and saying, like, we just want to, you know, like... we kind of s- being stalked, almost. Yeah, you're kind of being stalked. Like, it's... She's, like, obsessed with you as well. We know SK messed up. Like, please take him back. She's trying to portray that they were together. They really weren't together. It was more of just a sneaky this link. Are, these are her friends? Her best friend and her boyfriend. Well, yeah. Why, but why would... Yeah, why are they going to bat for SK? How do you know that they were really her friends? Well, because I only know, I mean. Like what are the chances SK hired a couple of actors or some <laughs> shit? I, I don't know. No, like, yes. So basically. I don't know what he's capable of at this point. Yeah. No, they were. There's pictures of all of them together okay. because in her second video that she posts days later, the four of them, SK and the girl and that couple that I'm talking about that called me, they went to Cabo in May. This is way after. They went to Cabo in May. At that point, are you guys together? At that point, we are together. I mean, I think him and I would both agree. We were pretty much solid by my birthday, which was in April. He knew my intentions. I I was not interested in dating anyone else. We were very close. At this point, I had already gone to San Francisco multiple times. So when she came with the second video in Cabo, it turns out that... They had all gone on a couple's trip, and this was actually a week after him and I went on my birthday trip to New Orleans, which is where I'm from. And we, like, stayed with my mom. And it was, you know, I told him how important this was to me. This isn't something that I normally do. You know, I'm trying to show you, like, I'm really ready to do it right outside of Love is Blind. And then literally the next weekend went to Cabo with her, told me he was in school the whole time. I was like texting him. We were talking like normal. And he was really in Mexico with her. How did you find out about that? So before that video came out, after the first one had come out, there was like about, let's, 
I don't know exactly how long, but less than a week, I think. It would be less than a week between her two videos. So once the first one dropped of hers, which is the second video, because the first girl was a different girl, I kept saying, tell me everything right now and it'll be fine. Just tell me, right? Like Mm -hmm. you wipe this slate clean and I'll ride for you because at least I'll know. And he kept saying, nothing, nothing. You have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to worry about. And then one night, I mean, at this point, like, I mean, I like, I'm an emotional person, but like, I've, I was crying on the floor. Like, I'm not like that, you know? And one night it had been a long, very emotional day for both of us. And we were in bed at like past midnight, just talking. And he was like, I have to tell you something. And I was like, nothing could be worse than this. <laughs> did, that, did your heart just drop at that point? Yeah, because I'm like, I don't even know what to expect at this point. My life, like I truly, I was like, I feel like my life is crumbling before my eyes. Don't we just like wish in general people would stop like prefacing bad news? It's like, hey, don't panic. Or I need to tell you something. It's just like, just... Don't be mad. Don't but, be mad. Don't but, be mad. You know, just just fucking just say it. Never has yeah. someone been less mad because you prefaced yeah. it with you don't be mad. You just stole two seconds of happiness from me that I could have had back before you just... Because it's either going to be as bad as you thought yeah. or not as bad. You're going to have a heart attack for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> and also, the worst is when they're like, if I tell you, do you promise not to be mad at me? Oh. That is like the most ma- manipulative... Sorry. But going back yeah, to is. like, he says... We're just like ranting about us. <laughs> I'm just like, fuck this guy. Just say it. Yeah. yeah. Say it. So anyway, so you're in bed and he's like, I got to tell you something. Yeah, we're in bed and I remember he was like laying on the headboard and I was like kind of by his feet. And I sat up and I was like, just say it. And he was like, I took her to Cabo. And I said, what are you talking about? He was like, I told you I was at school. It was in May, but I wasn't at school. I was in Cabo with her on a couple's trip. And my heart just sank. And I made him tell me when. It was literally a week after we had come back from New Orleans. Oh, God. That point was like the first time when I started using the words like, we're about to be done. Like, you're pushing it way past my limit because this is a bold face lie. And you knew we were together at that point. You can't. You can't argue it. At this point in May, we we had gone back and forth to see each other to see each other every like every month. Like we were together. At this point, we were already planning our couples trip, which is which was in June, with the two other couples from the show. And it's funny because when we were on that trip in June, he told me, "Oh, I've never been to Mexico before." And so now in no- girl, 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 th- girl, I was sick. Huh? I was sick. I'm like, why? Here I am, like in Tulum, like, baby, this look at Mexico. I Isn't Mexico it. great? <laughs> Isn't don't you love it? Don't here? you love it? Like having the best time. And I had no clue. I had no clue. Like literally the month before he was there with her. Um, so that was really, really hard. Like that was the first, I remember that was the first night. I was like, okay, like, look. I don't know what's about to happen, but I'm done with you. And this was this was before the video had dropped with the Cabo stuff. And I'm like, you better just pray she doesn't post this. Like, because that's going to kill me even more and we're definitely going to be done. So for the people out there who are just, uh, you know, listening to this and saying, Raven, girl. I know, I know. Like, why weren't you <laughs> done already? Yeah. Like, what what would you say to that? Yeah, I would say to that again. When you trust someone and you're what you guys saw on TV w- was the person that I felt I was with, right? Someone who's so intelligent and kind and attentive to me and my best friend and in love. Like you keep, like you were saying earlier, you keep telling yourself, well, that's the person that I'm with. And at this point, There was so much evidence that before the Cabo thing dropped, there was so much evidence that this was a lot of old stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he had lied about the old stuff. He hadn't told the whole truth, but there wasn't a lot of actions yet. 
you know? Yeah. Until more of those actions started coming out, that's when I was like, okay, it's the real deal. But I'm not giving myself excuses, but I think a lot of women go through this. Sure. I went, people. I went through that too. Yeah. yeah. And it, if I said it almost sounded like you, and I think a lot, again, people can relate to this, but you, you prioritize the way in which he, you know, made you feel happy and, mm-hmm. and deprioritize the ways he kind of disappointed you or made you sad. Yes, totally. And I think at a lot of points in our relationship, there were so many times where I was, and I don't know another word, but I was so confused because my intention and my actions were so aligned with how I felt. Like I was all in. I want to marry this person. Like I'm so loyal. I want to serve him. I want to make sure, you know, he's comfortable in a safe space that we're like in a great partnership together. And sometimes I would confuse because I thought he was on the same page as me, but then he would act differently. So constantly we would get it. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like I was thinking one thing, but then something else was before my eyes and it would make me so confused and then I realized of course after the fact like it's because he really wasn't there with me he really he and he we've talked about it after the fact but he really wasn't putting in a hundred percent and I was I'm curious in retrospect because I think sometimes when you learn about this like earth-shattering truth and it kind of recontextualizes all of these details and all Mm -hmm. these experiences you shared like kind of looking back on that to what extent do you think people can try to avoid being cheated on and to what Mm -hmm. extent it's like part of love is taking the leap of faith giving them benefit of the doubt not Mm -hmm. scrutinizing their every action and looking for the ways that they could be like this Machiavellian monster who's trying to hurt you I think that's a great question and I think after going through this and after really looking back I think you you have to lead with vulnerability of course right and that's something that this has really taught me because I've never been someone like that I'm like you guys you know like You know, I'm not like that anymore. Like, I am so ready to be vulnerable now. But also what this has taught me is that you've got to listen to your gut feeling. So if you, you know, if you're suspecting something, it's probably because something's there, you know, or if it's something small, like that just annoys you because of your past, that's different. But if you have a gut feeling, nine times out of 10, it's for a reason. Staying with this kind of thought, if you thought back in terms of these conversations, you're at the edge of the f- bed, he's, you know, um, and you're kind of thinking about, you know, these kind of reflections of not trusting your gut, you clearly asked him questions and you kind of pleaded with him to give you answers. Do you feel like there was a part of you, you know, maybe it's ego, maybe it's just a fear of the truth or whatever it is. Do you feel like you stopped short of asking more follow-up questions because I think I remember, you know, when I was in that position and confronting, you know, I, you know, I wanted to believe my girlfriend at the time when I heard she was cheating on me, but I still like asked her about it. I, was, I wanted her to tell me it wasn't true. I mm-hmm. wanted her to come up with a, an excuse that I could believe. And as soon as she came up with something that, you know, whatever part of it was that wanted to believe her, I stopped. Mm-hmm. asking questions i was like you know i didn't think to myself well, i don't know if that makes sense but what about this and like you know really getting asking those follow-up questions that are kind of hard to you know unless you really have a very detailed lie it's hard to mm-hmm. kind of answer do you feel like you stopped short in, in those moments or if you looked back are there other questions that you wish you would have asked to maybe kind of find out whether he was really telling the truth or not i think for me I was so like, just tell me everything like right now and it'll be okay. Just tell me everything. Just tell me everything. And every time he wouldn't tell me everything. But I kept letting that slide yeah. because every time he'd tell me a little more and then I'd say, just tell me everything right now and we'll be fine. We'll stay together. I promise. And he still, every time a little bit more would come out and I'm like, why did you need to keep going? I mean, at one point it had been weeks and it was still happening and I was still begging just be honest just tell me and he still wouldn't and I'm like why did I put myself through that because the first two days you should have just already known and if he wasn't willing to just completely just come clean like clearly he's not willing to be honest with himself or you so that's kind of where I was 
you know, I kept just waiting for him to do the right thing. Yeah. That's what it was. There was a time right when this is all going on. I don't know where you were, but I remember when seeing this, there were posts about lawyers, you mm-hmm. know, oh, lawyers are involved. I even remember talking to one of your producers and even the producer was telling me, you know, I don't know what's going on, but apparently there's, mm-hmm. they've gotten lawyers because, you know, it, it, the, what I understood it at the time was these allegations were all false yeah. and SK was hiring a lawyer to go after the, 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 the person yeah. making these accusations because it was, you know, uh, defamation type yeah. of type of claims or things like that. Like, what was that all about? Yeah. That was started from the, um, extortion thing. Um, okay. yeah. And then kind of the part that we haven't really touched on yet is while we're going through all this, there was like so much manipulation and gaslighting he really was just worried about saving his career in his face, you know, and he wanted to get lawyers involved to like make people take these claims away so it wouldn't look bad for him. What was he telling you about the lawyers? Yeah, I was there at home listening to him and the lawyers on the phone all day, every day. And basically he was like, this is for my career. That's literally what he said the entire time. This is for my career. Did him talking to these lawyers play a role in you believing him? Like probably, yeah. Or wanting, you know, it's just like he's willing to fight yeah. for his, you know. But he he wasn't fighting for me. Yeah. He was fighting literally. Right, yeah. I mean, like the hardest part of it was how he responded to all of this. Basically, by the end of it, I kept saying, like, what do you want me to do? Like, like, I want to help you. I, you know, I love you. But what do you want me to do? And basically, his answer was for me to say that, like, we weren't dating the whole time. To make these claims. He asked you to lie for him. Yes. And that was, like, just the most horrible thing for my life. Because I felt like. You are so insistent upon saving yourself that you want to just make me disappear. Because at the time, you were also facing criticism from fans about you kind of being in on it or a part of this, you know, some sort of plan to just, you know, get famous from the show. Yeah. And so he didn't, he didn't seem to really care or empathize with that at all. He, he actually, a- he literally asked you to do what you were being yeah. accused of and, and wasn't true at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a little bit at this time, especially the sentiment it seemed after our wedding episode was, you know, a lot of people had started to like me a little bit more and started to like, they felt like I was being more genuine, I guess. And, you know, that's everyone has a character arc. Um, but his whole thing was like, everyone loves you. You're everyone's favorite. And now everyone hates me. Can you please just say it wasn't true? So it'll, it'll save me a little bit. Like, I mean, that's what was being pushed into my head like every single day. And it was getting so confusing to the point like I almost felt like, I mean, because by this point it was over a week probably. And I just felt like he was only staying in our apartment, like, to make sure that I was doing things to play by his rules and, and make sure, to make sure I, I wouldn't tell the truth. Mm-hmm. And control you. Yes. And it was getting to the point, like, by the last few days, like, I literally would, like, not even be at, at our house because I, I felt like I was being monitored. Like, I was getting support on social media from people, like, You know, and of course there were a lot of critics, but I was getting support and he would send that to producers and be like, this is what people are saying to Raven. Don't let Raven post anything. You should tell Raven to take the anything I would say, whether it any anything I would say, he would ask for it to be taken down. He would try to report me to authorities like it was just I was under such a microscope. But meanwhile, I'm like, I am grieving an entire 
loss like in front of you and you were just shoving like I just felt like I was just being shoved down it was all about his reputation it was crazy like I literally producers would call me and you know just to check on me or like you know at that point they were like you know what is happening and I'm like he only cares about his reputation like it did not matter what I was going through yeah I also heard from uh, producers, and maybe you can add some context yeah. to this, that he was almost, it was like kind of this three-way conversation. He was telling you one thing mm-hmm. and then telling producers another thing and then, and, and then ha- hoping that producers would tell you yeah. almost to get the producers to convince you of something. I don't, I don't know, but I, I, was, I, was, I heard that they were, they kind of caught SK in a lie too, trying to almost manipulate, hoping that they would manipulate into believing certain things. Is yeah. that is there truth to that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, like he would send like the slightest little thing I would say on social media. He would not say anything to me and then he would send it to them and like they would come back to me like, Raven, what did you do? Like, did you post something? And I'm like, no, like I didn't say anything besides I responded to someone and said, thank you. And then I'd go back to him and he'd be like, well, you're not supposed to comment on anything. Analyzing my every action to to see if it was against him. You know, it was very much operation keep Raven quiet from saying the truth. When did you realize this was going on? Because I guess the, the elephant in the room is we just watched uh, you guys get re-engaged. Yeah. Only obviously for that to end what made you reconsider despite all this why did you say yes again even if for a short period of time so everything that i'm just saying we were already engaged at this point like you already re-engaged before all this before all the cheating yeah (laughs) so all of this is happening when we already have a lease together and we're already engaged again so when did you guys get engaged um in august isn't that around the same time when he and the girl were somewhat planning a trip, but then he bailed last minute because of school. Oh, so when we got to interview, we didn't you, get to that you, part. We yet. didn't get to know that you guys are engaged no. because of after the, it was. You guys didn't know. We yet. weren't privy to that information. Yeah. Oh, okay. You guys didn't know that. So yet. he was planning a trip with this TikTok girl when he <sighs> had a ring on your finger. Yeah. Oh, you were engaged. Though? We were in. We were literally engaged, and oh well, that makes it so much. Where I mean, at that point, yeah, and then of course yeah. you want to fucking believe the guy. I'm like, why would he get engaged to me again and do all of this? And literally text this girl, like, just the skeeziest. Just the... They were planning a trip. And, do and you then remember... he pulled out just because of school. Because of school. But you know what he told me? He said, I didn't go because, because I realized it was wrong. I'm like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. That's interesting. I said, well, why didn't you invite me? He said, well, it wasn't a trip you take your girl on. Well, <laughs> I'm like, you're why? cheating on her. <laughs> why would you even go on a trip that you shouldn't take your girl on? Was but this the, the it was boat a, was, trip? It was a couple. It was, was this a, the mega yacht trip? Yeah. To it, Miami. it was literally like him and his buddies inviting girls to go on a boat. What was it, Miami or and something? Miami. And, and then that he was, pulled out because he said he had school. And that was in September. And we were already engaged by then. And, but is that a different trip than the couple's trip? Yes, the couple's that trip was in, was in May. May. We weren't engaged in May, but we were engaged yeah. in August, and he was the still couple's trip. I feel like a couple's trip so is intimate, weirdly more intimate. It's than very like a intimate. Right? It's v- especially. I mean, what made me so sick about that is literally the weekend before him and I had had like the most intimate trip to my hometown. Took yeah, took all of our couples' pictures. Right, like haha. The next weekend. He goes and takes couples pictures with this girl. Yeah, that's, it could, you know. Kissing. They were kissing in these pictures. I'm like. Yeah, that's so much more intimate. I mean, I, you know, Natalie and I recently, you know, got engaged and, and after, you know, you reflect a little bit and then you, I had this thought of like, we, we had friends there who were couples and like, there's something about, you know, double dating with friends yeah. that like, there's a bond there. You know, and that, why that fucking because it's like an dog. us thing. Yeah, like it's an us relationship. Yes. It's like the two of us have this connection. And like with when another you make us. friends as a couple, it's, it's different. It's different, and there, it, it yeah, there's and something you you're like doing together. You're building something yes. together. Yeah, 
You're like you're building that your circle, your friends, and yeah. Well, I am so sorry <laughs> you've had to deal with all this. I know, right? For a lot of people who get cheated on and go through what you've gone through, it can really affect them long term and their ability yeah. to trust in the future. I really try my best, and and as someone who had been cheated on, you know, I, I always, I didn't want to be that person. You know, so I had to work really hard at still choosing to trust my next partner. Where do you think you are in your ability to not let this experience, um, you know, affect you when you start dating or or meet someone else? Are you? I mean, what? I don't. Are you? What's your relationship status now? Yeah, um, I'm definitely dating. You're definitely dating. <laughs> okay. Is there a special someone? I think. You think? I think. I don't want well, to jinx just, it. Let's just give it. Just... <laughs> yes. We love that. I know. So no, how, you know, now you there's someone, um, are, are you able to reveal who? Or no. Are you <laughs> Why okay. am I getting emotional about this? Well, it's hopefully exciting. <laughs> like, I feel so cliche saying this. It's so sick. But, like, I am such a different person from all of this. Um, Like, I've really learned so much in thank God for growth. Cause I'm not perfect either. You guys saw me. I was never vulnerable on the show. I was always standoffish. I didn't really believe like, you know, like I've never been someone who's like super receptive of love. Mm -hmm. And I think now I'm just like, I want to just go into something with 100% of my heart and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And that's okay because I know like I put everything that I have into it and I don't have any walls up. And like, I want that. I, I want to show up as me and see what happens. So I think being in that place has like, hopefully I think brought me someone pretty great who's also seems to be in that place. And it's amazing to start something like, from a place of vulnerability and like communicating where you are, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And I'm, I assume that, you know, you're, I'm guessing you've probably had to keep that relationship under wraps as well for, for a period of time. Yeah. And it's very new. I like probably shouldn't be talking about it, <laughs> but you know, like you're optimistic. I'm literally, I always say I'm delusionally optimistic. I really am. Like I, I, I always that's said how I live I, my I'd life. rather be a fool than than be a jaded cynic when it comes to love. You know, same. You know, if 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 the worst thing we do is choose to trust and believe in people and and be suckers for it, that's better than the alternative. Agreed. Um, and like I'm so ready because, I mean, to be honest, I thought this whole, I was really looking forward to this whole post show thing, like. I wanted to do that with SK. Like I wanted to go into this new part of our lives together. I was looking for, like we had already started looking at properties in LA to move once he graduates. Like I was so excited to start a new chapter and I know that's not the chapter that I'm starting, but like I'm really ready to live my life differently and do that with someone. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you spoke with SK? Um, Probably like two weeks ago. Why? What was that conversation? Why? <laughs> That's literally the same thing my mom said. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, who reached out to who? Uh, he reached out to me, yeah. And what did he have to say? He, he did say, you know, I see how I was so worried about myself and protecting myself that I didn't really care about how you were feeling. And he acknowledged that for the first time, which was nice to hear you know but doesn't really change anything um did he and he apologized yeah yeah he apologized and of course he was like you know i'd love to work on things yeah <laughs> he, he tried to try to get back together oh yeah no. this whole time girl i know i know this yeah, whole time everyone in that's america a, is like no but that's like <laughs> it, yeah fuck you okay. you burn the bridge the closet door is shut stop trying if you really knew what you did and you fully under understood the hurt he caused, he wouldn't have asked you to get back together. And I don't, I, yeah. I, how, right? I think, I mean, and there's so much more to like, we haven't even touched on, but. What, can we touch on it? I mean, 
Um, yeah. I think he just thinks that I'm going to get over it, you know? And so he's still trying. No, I mean, not since that conversation. Because I told him, like, I could even feel. So finally, it took him a while to leave our house. And that was extremely hard for me. What do you mean it took him a while to leave your house? Like, when all of this was happening, um, like, we, he was on break from school, so we were literally living together. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, when the second video dropped, the second, technically the third video, but the second video from the second girl dropped, it had the Cabo stuff in it. And literally an hour before, I didn't know it was going to come out. Okay, the night before he tells me about Cabo, right? Then it's like the next day in the afternoon, almost about 24 hours later, we're standing in the kitchen and I'm like, show me your phone. This was the first time I said, show me the phone right now. Have you been talking to her while we've been going through this? And he's like, no, no, I haven't been talking. I said, okay, show me the phone. He shows me the phone. And that's when I find out about Miami. He had still never told me about Miami. I start scrolling through the messages and I see it. And I said, September? We were already engaged by this point. He's, I didn't go. I didn't go. I said, I don't care. I said, first of all, we're done here. And if she puts this on the internet, it will literally break my heart. Like, because I can't go through anything else. Like, we're done. You need to leave the house. Like, I'm over it. And he's like, oh, you know, whatever. I get really upset again because this is this was like the hardest part for me. Literally, as soon as I said it, she posts the second video with all of the Cabo, with all of the Miami. And I like lost it. Like, I've we've never screamed at each other like that before. Like, it was crazy. Um, Why was he screaming back? I know. And I shouldn't have taken it there either. It's like I almost spoke it into existence. And That was the first time I'd ever seen the phone and seen for real. I mean, even October 9th, he texted her happy birthday 10 days before the show came out. What is the name of your book? What is the name of your book? Don't text your ex happy birthday. Don't. Thanks for the plug. (laughs) Now go buy the book, (laughs) y'all. But, Uh, you know, um, so that it got crazy out of hand at this point, like, you know, producers know producers are telling me don't say anything don't say anything i'm going my friends are like what is happening are you okay you need to get out of your house right now and i said you need to leave and he wouldn't leave um then the next day like the craziest part when you asked me earlier like when did you realize you were really being manipulated the next day one of the producers called me on the phone and she was like I want to tell you that when all of this came out, like, I was so happy about it. Like, I'm so glad that you guys are not together now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, there were so many things. We thought you knew about him and we're just choosing to stay with him. But now we see that you had no idea what was actually happening. And I was like, first of all, why didn't anybody say anything? But um, so apparently... After we got engaged, he backtracked, went back to producers and set and started like pleading with them to take it out. Um, take what out? The engagement. And she was like, don't say at this point, she knows, like, I don't know what to do. And she's like, don't say anything that I told you, you know, we're going to just wait and see when he leaves. But we thought you knew and we thought you guys were breaking up because he was so insistent. He didn't want the engagement to be aired. And I, I had no idea. At this point, it was like, it was like over a month after the engagement. had. I had no idea he did that. And it was like, that was the last straw for me. So to make sure we all understand, you had no, like, you had no idea that he had reached out to producers mm-hmm. And you thought you guys were in a decent... Sp- this is like September? That clip that when I talked to y'all was in November. I still had no idea he went to produce. I had no idea he went to producers till Thanksgiving. But he went to producers in October when we were here filming a reunion. We are filming reunion and he went off the grid, remember? No one could find him, couldn't get a hold of him. Everyone was freaking out. Come to find out. 
he locked himself in a van with one of the producers and was like, you got to take the engagement out. You got to take the engagement out. Literally hours later, comes back home, like to our, to our hotel is being so weird. We get in the biggest fight. He tells me like he was sad about his mom or something. Yeah. And really what it was, was that he was. You thought you were good. Yeah. At that point, I had no idea. This was before you came on our show and talked about how yes how good I had no things idea. were how much you trusted him i had no idea until the producer called me after all this after y'all's clip after everything came out called me and she was like i thought you knew he asked to take the engagement out and I, how would i know that did he ever explain to you or any producer why he was asking for it to no. be taken out they said they could not figure out what was wrong with him my inkling is that the girl was already in his ear saying sure, she was sure. going to say yeah, something yeah. that's that's i've never I, I brought it up to him once but i didn't push it because i could tell he was lying he wasn't going to tell me the truth and by this point that was the straw that broke the camel's back Oof. yeah that was like the level of manipulation like you literally did all of that on camera got re-engaged it was for real and then a month later without even telling me or talking to me about it you go back and you're like please don't air it don't air it. I thought we were engaged. Like, <laughs> well, so let's say the producer listened to him and then this whole th- let's let's say everything goes swimmingly and none of this comes out and you guys are still engaged currently to this moment. Well, yeah, when you it? watch the episode, aren't you gonna say, Where's our engagement? And then the That's producers weird. Yeah, like, why like, wouldn't weird? they air that? That's a huge win for the show. I don't know, baby. You, know, you, you sit why down in there. It's her engagement episode, and you're like, where is it? <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, wow. Like, it's getting towards the end. Like, You're like, oh, I must have really... This must be the part. No, 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 this is the part right here. Uh, <laughs> like, maybe we missed it. Yeah. <laughs> Refresh. Rewind. Yeah. Wow. He didn't think that far ahead. But yeah, she literally called me and was like, I thought y'all had broken up. I thought you knew. And now looking back, I realized you had no idea. <sighs> like a really smart, dumb guy. Well, I think it's like this like level of hubris where like if you're smart, if you view yourself as a smart problem you solver, maybe so, you think you'll be able to evade yeah, all consequences yeah. because you'll solve every single quote unquote problem. Never been to Mexico before. <laughs> you seem like you had a, a decent relationship with his mom. Had mm-hmm. you spoken with her at all no. while this is all going on? No. Um, so, like I said, all of this was happening right before Thanksgiving. And I was supposed to go to Thanksgiving with him, like take it bought, bags packed. And then this happened. I'm like, okay, clearly I'm not going. And I was like, do you want me to call your mom? Like me, you know, his family's blowing up. His family's very, I love his family, but they're very protect our own. Like, you know, and so I could tell they were very concerned about him. And I kind of felt like a little bit, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. They're always going to take their son's yeah. side. Yeah, like they're yeah. they're worried about him. Yeah. And like almost by default, you're worried whether you're the bad guy. Exactly. I kind of was feeling like the bad guy. So I was like, I, I just asked him, I was like, do you want me? I would love to talk to your mom. I would love, I would love that. Do you want me to call her? And he said no. So I said, okay. You're like respecting his territory. Yeah. Like I really care about his mom. Everything y'all saw between her and I was like, so for real Mm -hmm. like she is amazing stuff like this that's her son so what am i gonna do yeah well raven i i thank you for being so vulnerable i'm really sorry you had to go through this no um let's take a quick break from your story and if you're down to hear someone else's relationship problems love and uh hopefully we can help them you down for some texting (laughs) office hours hell yeah let's do it How's it going? Hi, uh, my name's Miranda and I'm 24. How can we help Miranda? So I am going on a couple's vacation with my best friend who is cheating on her boyfriend and I don't really know what to do about it. Okay, well, I have strong opinions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before we get into the detail details, I would love to know what you think you should do about it. Um, there's a few different options that I have and Uh I'm kind of, I've been weighing them. Okay. Shoot. So, um, I found out about the cheating about three weeks ago and this trip has already been booked for a while. How did you find out about the cheating? So she drunkenly confessed it to me. 
Okay. So we were like out at a bar and she was on her phone and I saw a name. I'm just going to use a fake name. I'm going to say Steve. I kept seeing Steve on her phone, which is not the name of her boyfriend. So I was like, that's weird. I remember a Steve from back in the day when her and I were both single. She used to talk to a guy named Steve. So I was like, hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, you kind of get the courage when you're drunk. So we were in the bathroom and she was like, come take a picture with me. So I was taking a picture with her on Snapchat and I could see it was going to Steve. So I was like, what are you doing talking to Steve? Like, that's the Steve that you used to. Their past was like, they met at a festival. They hooked up a few times. They talked for a while. He didn't want a relationship. That was it. And she was like, oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. Like, don't worry about it. And I was like, well, it doesn't really seem like nothing. Like, that's pretty weird. And she was like, it's completely friendly. And I was like, "Uh, okay. We were with other girls, so I didn't really want to get into it. So I just kind of like left it. And then when we got home from the night out, when we were like getting ready for bed, I was like, are we not going to talk about the Steve thing? Like, can we talk about Steve? Because to me, like even like Snapchatting someone, texting someone is still cheating, Mm -hmm. you know, especially someone that you have like a past with. And it's very obvious her boyfriend doesn't know. And when I said, can we talk about it? She just immediately started crying. So I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. So it was more so like of a, how much have you done or like how far has this gone? It was kind of just established between us that we both knew what was going on. And at first she was like, it's literally just texting. Like I'm just enjoying the attention. It's nothing. And then just, I know her so well that I was like, I don't believe you. (laughs) Like just by the way she was saying it, I was like, you're lying to me. Like, don't lie to me. Um, And then she eventually confessed. uh, What she said was that they've met up three times and that on the last time they met up, it progressed to like physical cheating. So like kissing, sex, like everything. So it went from like, it's nothing to mm-hmm. I've like fully met up with him. And obviously we were like drunk. So I was just like, this is so much for me to handle right now. I wasn't even thinking about the trip until like a few days after that night out, she was like sending me bathing suits being like, what do you think of this one? And I was like, holy shit, I'm going on a trip <laughs> with you and your boyfriend and my boyfriend. Like, Did she acknowledge what she confessed to the next day? Does she remember how drunk was oh, she? Oh yeah, she remembers it. So okay. we were in a different city. So we were like driving home together. And in the car, I was like, so what's going on? Like, are you wanting to leave your boyfriend for Steve? Like, is that is that what we have? Because her and her boyfriend live together and they have a dog together. So I'm like, this is very, very messy because if you break up, like you need to move out. Mm-hmm. She moved to a different city with him. So like she lives in a different city. So I was like, if that's what you want to do, if you want to like leave your relationship, like I'll help you pack up your shit. <laughs> but if that's not what you want to do, you need to stop talking to Steve. You know, like th- it's one or the other. Um, And she claimed that she doesn't want to break up with her boyfriend, which means she has no intention of leaving the relationship that she's in. So that's kind of where it left off. Gotcha. And so what do you think you should do? I don't know. So another like layer to this is that my boyfriend and her boyfriend, like we hang out a lot as couples Uh and they've become very close friends, like to the point that like they even hang out without us. Uh, Does your boyfriend know? No. Okay. So So you are currently not being honest with your boyfriend. I didn't have the heart to tell him everything that happened because I was like totally panicked. Like when I was driving home that day, I was like, holy shit, like what do I do with all this yeah, knowledge? Yeah. So I told him, I was, I told him like a half truth. I said, I saw her talking to somebody on her phone. I saw her talking to another guy. I didn't tell him the depths of it because I wanted to see how he handled that first. Why? Because she told me and I just had a feeling that he would go and tell him. And I didn't know if I was ready so to like why did you... open that can of worms. So then why, why with the half truth? Well, because she literally like made me swear up and down that I wouldn't tell him. So then if I told him and then he went and told her boyfriend, then it, it's, she's going to freak out at me, even though obviously it's not my fault that she's doing that. But I literally swore up and down that I wouldn't say anything. Yeah, I hear you. So um, what it do puts you think, me in a really tough position. What do you think uh, being a good friend means to you? What does being a good friend mean to you? I mean, being honest, which I was honest with her, like immediately I said to her, like, you need to pick one. You need to either leave your relationship, be with Steve or stop talking to him right now. (laughs) 
I told her like I don't want to hear about your like whatever you're doing with him like I I don't want to be a part of it like I told her I was disapproving of it mm -hmm. like that it was wrong but at the same time like I can't control what he does like, or what she does so like no. I feel like I was being honest and I was like because I'm not a very confrontational person I'm a, pretty much a people pleaser so yeah. it was already a lot for me to be like look I don't think this is okay I think you need to stop like yeah. immediately <laughs> uh -huh. um but other than that that's basically all that I've I haven't seen her since because she lives like an hour away from me but I'm seeing her on Monday to watch The Bachelor so now I'm just like I feel like we need to have a conversation when I see her next and I don't really know like how I should approach that or what I even can or can't say that what do you mean sense. like do I have the right to say I don't want to go on this trip with you if you don't stop talking to him <laughs> Like, is that within I mean, my... You have, you have the right to say whatever you want. I mean, you know, how much do you care about doing the right thing versus avoiding conflict and trying to make everyone happy? See, that's like my, always my dilemma is avoiding conflict and trying to make everyone happy. And no, then I get I'm that, but what happens I do when that a lot. What happens when it's uh, versus doing the right thing? It's tough because I've been thinking about us going on this trip and I'm like, I don't even know how I'm going to be able to act normal around him because sure. now I feel guilty by association. Like, I mean, I, I guess him? how much do you care about your person? Like right now, your integrity is on the line. Yeah, that's what I've been feeling. So, I mean, so there's just so and many And I guess layers, when I say like, how much, what does it mean to be a good friend to you? Would you say holding your friends, like, do you believe your friend is a good person? Overall, I do think she is a good person. Great, that's um, good. I'm but I think glad. she's been going through like a rough patch sure. for the last little while. And yeah. she's done a few things that are out of character. This is not the only thing that she's done out of okay. character in the last like year or so. So do you think being a good friend is, is helping your friend going through a, a, a tough patch? Maybe there's some past trauma in her life. Maybe something happened. Who knows? Maybe she's acting out right now and she maybe, who knows, doesn't even fully grasp what she's doing, you know, um, mm -hmm. on some level. So I guess well, I'm just back to asking what kind of friend do you want to be to your friend? Like, do you want to help her in the long run overall? You know, do you want to say, do you believe in her? Do you think she's better than this? I do. I've mm -hmm. known her for a really long time. And my only thing that's been planting a seed of doubt in my mind is that like a long time ago, like we were really young, mm -hmm. she cheated on her like ex-boyfriend from forever, like five boyfriends ago. Sure. And it was like a super toxic relationship. So at the time I was like, whatever she has to do to get out of this relationship, I don't really care. Sure. We were also a lot younger. Yeah, yeah. So now that it's happening again, I'm like, it kind of reaches the question of like, is my friend a serial cheater? as well because this is now her second time doing this but because we were like it was so many years ago the first time and i was so much younger i think i was literally like 17 years old i just feel like it's different then either you believe in your friend that this is out of character for her and despite her choices that she's made throughout her life that you believe that who you decided to be friends with is a good person with a conscience who has a desire to be a good person and bring happiness to people's life and do good by people and make high character choices when people aren't looking, et cetera, et cetera. Or you've been wrong about her, right? Mm -hmm. And if you have been wrong about her, do you want to maintain being friends with her? So I've been thinking about that as well, just because it's one of those friendships where when you've been friends for so long, it's kind of like, those years mean a lot that it seems like one mess up that they do doesn't seem worth it for me. Like, I feel like she adds a lot to my life that it's like, mm -hmm. I think I, I don't want to say look past because I'm not looking past it because this happened like weeks ago and I'm still thinking about it like every day. So it's yeah. obviously like not just a small little whatever, but I but do. Feel I would like file that in the bucket I of you think she's a good person who's doing mm -hmm. bad things right now. Yeah. But I'm asking you, if it turns out, if you have some sort of realization that she's just simply not the person you thought she was, that behind this lie, there are more lies. And she's just been better at, li she's been better at lying to you in the past than she is in this moment. And maybe it's the alcohol that a coincidence of you looking at her shoulder, you call it her in this lie. And the more you look deeper, the more you uncover that she's just like not a high character person. And I'm asking you, 
just you know despite your history despite your friendship if that turns out to be true do you want to be friends with her i mean probably not okay that makes sense <laughs> but i'm right? also like i'm pretty notorious for being kind of cold and cutting people off okay great like if someone makes one mistake or wrongs me one time i've been pretty notorious for just being like i'm not associating with that person anymore so i've been trying to be like more graceful and more forgiving sure, but yeah. it's like at what caught like where do you draw the line because sometimes i feel like i would maybe you, cut you people make, off too easy you make tough choices in tough situations and you hold your friends yeah. accountable and you push them to do the right thing and you try to give them as many opportunities to do that even in the mm -hmm. moment if they uh, beg and say they'll never be friends with you et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. you know like to me there's well, only, well, to me the answer is simple what you should do what is your answer? I would love to know. You reach out to your friend or maybe you wait to Monday night, whatever. Time seems to be limited because of this trip. Mm -hmm. And you sit her down and you say, listen, I've been thinking a lot about what happened and you need to tell him. Like, I think you're a good person. I love you. I think this is out of character for who the person I got to know. Mm -hmm. I believe that there's a good person and we've all done bad things, but it's how we handle these choices. And you need to tell him. And I'll give you a few days, but if you don't, mm -hmm. I will. And I love you and I'm here to support you. And as long as you're willing to try to do the right thing, and maybe you need some therapy to address like these choices you're making, but mm -hmm. as long as you're willing to try to be a better person, I will always be your friend. And you can be mad at me, and you can say whatever you want to me right now, but I'm saying this to you because I believe in you. And I think you're better than this. This is going to be hard. And I don't know what's going to happen with this trip. I don't know what's going to happen with your relationship with your boyfriend. But I'll be with you to help you get through it one way or the other. But like, mm -hmm. it's going to come out. This is not who you are. This is not, I'm hoping you don't want to live with this choice that you're making. I hope that you want to believe that you have better integrity than this. And I'm here to be your friend. This is me being your friend because I love you. And this is painful to me and I don't want to do this and I'm uncomfortable right now and I'm scared and I can only imagine you are, but it's because I love you that I'm insisting that you tell him. And if you don't, I'm going to. So it's, it's up to you. But there is nothing you can say to me to change my mind. So you need to do this before the trip. And then you need to tell your boyfriend and tell him that you haven't been fully honest with him because I promise you, if he finds out later, every day that goes by that he knows that you didn't tell him, he's going to start questioning you. Birds of a feather. And it's hard because I tell him literally everything like i tell him like we tell each no, other what don't. we eat for breakfast lunch and dinner yeah, and this yeah. is the only thing i've yeah. ever hid from him and and the it's only been, thing like, you ever hid from hard. him is about your girlfriend cheating on her boyfriend so if you want to destroy your trust with your boyfriend keep doing what you're doing <laughs> i know it's a high stakes situation i'm like it's not i mean it's high stakes but it's actually not that complicated or that simple it's difficult and don't be the person who tries to make excuses for the situation, be like, well, it's really none of my business. And, you know, I don't like, oh, like, what do I do? I don't like, he would want to know, you would want to know, your boyfriend would want to yeah. know. She's playing him for a fool. And if she really mm -hmm. wants to be with him, like she needs to figure out her shit because she's going to destroy, she's destroying lives. And this has a, ri this, this type of stuff has a ripple effect. I don't know what relationship she has with his parents or vice versa. The longer this goes on, the worse it's going to get. And if she has any hope and reconciliation with her boyfriend, the longer she lies to him, the worse it's going to get. And yeah. And I, I, I think if you don't take my advice, you're going to regret it. Because you're torturing yourself. Like you're, and it's I not your fault, myself. but you're torturing yeah. yourself. You got like yeah. thrown into this insane situation that is like every people pleaser's nightmare where it's like there is no yeah. option where everybody's pleased in this. Like, even if she does, like, the right thing and tells her boy, like, he is going to be really upset and devastated. And it's definitely, like, oh, the yeah. best on a list of, like, imperfect options. But, like, that is a horrific situation to be in. And you're being so thoughtful about it. But also, like, in terms of, like, your own self-preservation, like, you're lying, you know, kind of like Nick said, like, you're lying by omission right now to your boyfriend. 
And yes, you're doing it for a really noble cause in the sense of like, it should be a conversation that first and foremost, like he should find out from her that she is cheating or sorry, yeah. like your friend's boyfriend should find out from her. So like it makes total sense why you're doing it. But it's also like it's putting you in jeopardy. Also, I mean, you're currently an accomplice. That's how I feel, which is why I know like it can't because I I tried doing the like convincing myself like, oh, it's not really my business. And like it was eating me alive. I'm like, it's not like I can't. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not built like that. Like yeah. even if even if the other stuff hadn't been told, even the texts on her phone was enough for like to make my stomach turn. Never mind. Like it just got worse and worse. I was just like. Yeah, I think this lot, is a but... defining moment in your life. I don't mean to oversell it, but yeah, you are going to look back and either you're going to handle it the right way or the wrong way. And if you handle it the wrong way, it's going to affect your life. It's going to get people to question you. It's going to get you to question yourself. People yeah. will think differently of you if they find out you tried to hide this. Mm -hmm. um, people will lose trust in you. You will doubt yourself. And you might end up just becoming this person who makes it, you know, and gets good at making excuses for themselves. Or you can be a good friend. You can do the very difficult but right thing. And you can support her with love and, and challenge her and, and say, like, I'm doing this because I believe in you. Because if I, if I didn't believe in you, I'd just stop talking to you because I don't, this isn't okay. It's like, you don't, and you don't need yeah. me to explain that it's not okay because you're lying. And you lied to me. And it's all, it's affecting our relationship. So like, it has to stop. I'm not going to mm -hmm. be party to this. You're, I'm not going to continue to lie to my boyfriend. This is not what I want. So either, either you need a wake up call and you're willing to start making amends mm -hmm. or you're not. But like, I hope you are because I love you and I want to be your friend. And as long as you're willing to try to do the right thing, I will support you and have your back. See, when you say it like that, it sounds like so seamless, but I oh, think it won't, my it won't be I've been like, because when I, when she told me like, you can't tell, like, don't tell anyone. Like she told me specifically not to tell my boyfriend and I, like at the time I was drunk and just like overwhelmed and confused. So yeah, I was, it like, doesn't really matter what you probably were in a state of shock. My boyfriend and her boyfriend are good friends. Like we have this dynamic where the four of us hang out and she was basically saying like, if you tell anyone, this is all going to be ruined. Yeah, so but then yeah. you're lying like, to your mm. boyfriend. Like, I'm like, that's a selfish thing mm. for her to say because it's like. Even with the mentality of, oh, this isn't really my business or, oh, it's between the two of them. Like, as Nick was saying, the ripple effect, like every it's going to mm -hmm. no matter who's cheating on who or what the situation is, it's always going to involve more than just those two. You have an even better excuse mm -hmm. for being like, um, excuse me, you're telling me I'm going to ruin this dynamic. Actually, no, you're going to ruin this dynamic she already ruined because the dynamic. you're right. having me lie to my partner. Yeah. So that's not yeah. fair to you and your boyfriend either. The dynamic doesn't exist. As you know, you know. And you know that you can't go on this trip and be normal. You can pretend to try to be normal. The, the, re the relationship's fucked. The vacation's fucked. The relationship's clearly fucked. But yeah. the vacation's done. At this point, maybe you and your boyfriend can That's go by thinking. yourselves and just enjoy each other and spend the entire vacation talking about how you don't want to be those people and maybe focus on reconnecting and working on trust and spend a lot of time sharing stories and maybe it's like omit some things and talk about feelings and try to really connect and, and try to make some good out of this trip. But like your friend is fucking up her world and other people's worlds and this is a, a truly defining moment in your life to do the right thing. And it's not, it's not, yeah. it's black and white. It's, th mm -hmm. this is the only right thing to do and everything else is just an excuse or an easy way out and something I assure you, you will regret and people will judge your character based off of how you handle this and wanting to be the right person and wanting to be a good person and being the right person and being a good person are two very different things. And it's so, I get that it's so challenging because this is your best friend. This is someone who you align with on so many levels. And most of the time you don't butt heads or disagree with her on things because you're right on the same alley. So this is extremely uncomfortable but like something that I've been talking about a lot recently is like one of my roommates just like very brilliantly was like I think when people bring conflict to me directly I look at it as such an act of love that they are willing to endure the discomfort in service of our relationship and like that's what you're doing here you're enduring a ton of discomfort like extreme discomfort in order to hopefully like help her reconnect with who she is and to like repair like my therapist says, life is about the repairs. Like this is a huge fucking hole that needs to get repaired. Yeah. 
and I'm so it's sorry. It's not that even you- a hole. It's like a crater. It's like yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like a nuclear. And then, yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. And like, then it's just like the fallout of all of it. After then, like, is she gonna not want to be friends with me I mean, because I I don't know. Told, but like, like that's that's her I- choice and her journey, and you'll have to figure it out. But like, kind of like what I was asking before. Either she's a person who's had some, you know, trauma in her past that fucked her up a little bit and she's dealing with this trauma in a very toxic and destructive way. And maybe this kind of being called out and having and having a light shine on on her choices and having people like call her out and see her for who she really is might be a wake up call that she needs. Or she will tell you to fuck off and make excuses, in which case you can now realize that maybe she's not the person I thought she was. Your friend will decide for herself whether this is who she wants to be or not. And, you know, hopefully she has the means and the access to things like therapy and the support from her community like you to encourage her that there's always a chance to like get help. And and she is young. She's still young. There is a chance for her to change and maybe be a better person. But like if she doesn't, her life's going to suck. If she doesn't fix these choices, she will always be some version of this person who's willing to lie and be deceitful and and destroys people's trust and and she'll have broken relationship after broken relationship and her life is going to suck and she's going to make other people's lives suck i mean this type of behavior destroys lives and i want to believe that people are capable of change you know and i and i i do believe that good people can do bad things especially you know, if, if trauma they experienced as a child or whatever isn't properly dealt with and they push it down and they push it down and they, they you know, react in a very kind of toxic manner. But you're being a hero to your friend by doing the right thing. It's why it's called the right thing because it's fucking hard sometimes. And I, I don't know. I know people, you're, you're not being a friend by enabling her. You're not being a friend by shutting your mouth and keeping it quiet and keeping her secrets. You're not. And you're also going to resent her like you yourself. If like if you try to like shove the situation down, then like that's going to like fuck you up a little bit. And like you don't want you wouldn't want a friend to be like resenting you or putting you in an atrocious position where you had no choice but to have all these like negative feelings towards them because of it. So it's like it really is like the yeah. service to everyone. But it's so fucking hard. And I don't know your past, or yeah. your childhood or, you know, but maybe you know, maybe you've been giving different blessings in your friend, you know, maybe you are in a position to hold her to a higher standard because whatever, for whatever reason, maybe, maybe, maybe people weren't good to her early in her life. And this is how this has happened. But the only way to show her grace is to hold her accountable and then be willing to stand by her side as she's willing to work through some of these issues and stop hurting other people and herself. And you're willing to be her friend in that time. And that's being a friend, you know, because other yeah. people might say, well, I don't want to associate myself with her, and, you know, fuck her and blah, blah, blah. I don't trust her. So that's not what you're willing to do. You're willing to, hey, I may not even trust you the same, but I'm, I'm here to be your friend. I will listen. I will be there for you. I will fucking take you to ther- whatever the fuck. I will do whatever I have to do to help you get your life back. And so that you can respect yourself and so that you can like your choices and you don't have to keep living a lie. And, you know, and on some level, I'm sure your friend, if she's not some sort of dark sociopath, she's probably suffering. Yeah. I don't think she is a sociopath because when I was like confronting her, well, not like confronting her when she was like confessing everything to me, she was like really, really crying. And I was like, what, what is making you cry so much? And like, why are you crying so much right now? Because I wasn't crying. I wasn't even angry. I was just listening. And she was like, he doesn't deserve this. Like, I know he doesn't deserve this. Like, I feel so guilty. Like, she was saying, so it's like, she does feel, Yeah, she knows it's wrong. She's suffering right now and she probably doesn't know what to do and she's probably scared and and maybe, you know, I don't know why she did what she did, but it happened and maybe she was, you know, addressing some sort of fucked up, who who knows? But Mm -hmm. again, you know, if you believe in your friend, if you believe in her character, if you think there's a person worth saving there, then you need to do the right thing. And you will yeah. feel so much better about yourself, however she handles it, by doing the right thing. And your boyfriend will respect you more. You will respect yourself. The, the, I mean, it's, it's so night and day. 
what you should do versus, and it's it's amazing how many people don't do the right thing because it's easy to just make excuses and be like, well, it's not really, I didn't know what to say. It's not my fault. And how, you know. And be crippled by the guilt of a bad yeah. choice. And so it's like, she's never, this choice is always going to be a bad choice. And I think the best thing you could possibly do is like show her that she has more choices to make. We can call up together and call her right now. Absolutely. First, first off, she's working. She's, um, I can't, actually, I can't say what kind of job she does because yeah. I don't want if she hears this, but yeah. she's kind of job where you cannot go on your phone. She has a very important job. So, but I want to do it in person, but it's just so out of my comfort zone. Like this is going to be very, like my hands are starting to sweat. Just like, yeah, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be, be easy. And uh, I'm glad that I'm you're at least willing to consider it, but doing the right thing often is really hard. And this, again, it's, it's a defining moment in your life. I think you're right. Cause I wasn't like, it was really eating away at me, but I think hearing you say it's a defining moment is just like solidifying how serious it is because I was like trying to brush it off, even though it wasn't working at all, <laughs> but I was trying to. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think it doesn't help that it involves like basically the two people closest to me besides my yeah. family, like my oh, best friend and my I boyfriend. Hear so it's not easy, kind of. but he, he will be thankful and you are helping him and her by doing this. And you're hurting everyone by keeping her secret. Including yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel kind of silly, but a little part of me wishes I never saw it. But obviously that's not like authentic. Like I don't want to live in denial, but just yeah, a I tiny mean, I, part I get, of me I get the wishes feeling. that I never yeah, saw it. <laughs> it's a normal feeling. Yeah. I get it. Like this yeah. sucks that you have to do and you learn something about your friend that you didn't want to learn. You know, you don't want to... Yeah. No one wants to wake up and realize that maybe their friend isn't the person they thought they knew. And if they are, that they need a lot of help and it's going to be a long journey ahead. You know, I mean, on some level, your life has forever changed because of this revelation. You know, your best friend yeah. who you're very close with is either going to need a lot of support and help and, and is gonna, it's going to be hard. And she might say really mean things to you in the short run. Or you're going to realize yeah, that likely. she's a monster and you don't, you can't associate yourself with her. But like, yeah, I'm, you know, yeah. and I'm sorry that you're going through this. It really fucking sucks. And I, and trust me, like I, 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 you know, I've been there. It's not fun. I feel like no one's been, anyone that I, I've only really talked to one person about it, which was my sister. And she's kind of like separated from everybody involved. She doesn't really know anybody that well. So I wanted like an unbiased opinion. And she was like, if I were you, I would be angry that I was put in that situation. Like, I don't know why you're afraid to approach her. Like, I would be like, I'm fucking pissed yeah. that you put me in this situation. Well, everyone handles it differently. Which I but was like, yeah. I mean, but you would certainly have the right way. to be mad, but a lot of people have been through this. And I, I, I can tell you firsthand uh, you, what you should do. Wow. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, it's going to take a lot, but I think I, I don't really think I have a choice. You like know, I uh, have to. I mean, you, like you, I don't. You have a choice. You do. I don't think a, a choice that I could live with. I think there's only one. It's up for you to uh, decide, right? But like, but, yeah. I hope you decide to do the right thing because there is a right way choice and a wrong choice. But there are choices, and people make bad choices every day. Yeah, I think if I chose the the wrong choice, I would only choose that choice for a little while, and then it would end up coming out in a way worse way. Yeah, yeah. one hundred percent. So it's just like I. Because I also said to her, like, when I first figured it out, like, when she was confessing it all to me, I was like, it's only a matter of time till he finds out. Like, it's not an if, it's a when. Yeah, it's in the, like, I hope you only realize get, that. It only gets messier. So I was like, your your days are limited with this, like, secret. Like, they live together. He could go through her iPad or her whatever and, like, find, like, I'm just like, there's no way that he won't yeah, make it. Yeah, on some out, level, so. she's probably being sloppier than she realizes. And maybe on some level, she wants to get caught. And again, like, I think these type of situations are really tricky. Mm -hmm. And I don't think everyone who cheats is some sort of sociopath, but there are reasons why they do it. And it's not a justification. It's just an explanation. And, and it's only for the, you know, again, maybe she can get help. But yeah. uh, if she doesn't immediately jump into therapy and take it seriously, then I would tread lightly with how, how much you trust her. And, yeah, and I've suggested that to her more than once for because she's made a few other poor decisions not close to this but she's made a few other poor decisions and i'm like you should really consider going to therapy because i've gone to therapy on and off for like three years i like work in mental health like i'm very much yeah I, that's why i can't believe i'm coming on this podcast when i literally work in mental health <laughs> but i mean i needed like a unbiased opinion i go to I therapy all the time know. you know like so yeah um 
It's tough. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an, and I'm sorry you're going through this because uh, I know it's I know it's really really hard. And maybe this is the rock bottom she needs to hit to get therapy. It could be. It actually, it very well could. It be won't be. It won't be says, keeping oh, her lie. I'll tell you that much. That won't wake her up. Yeah. She always says, "Oh, I'll look into it," and then she like never does. It's scary. It's scary. So, she probably. I mean, yeah. most people who really need therapy are terrified of therapy because there's probably a lot of demons they've what they're used to do is just kind of put down and suppress and pretend they're not there and that has become their norm and so they become good liars because they're lying to themselves and they're trying to survive and i'm sure it can be very scary but like when their worlds fall apart and they realize that they've hurt people and they've destroyed lives then there's a chance that they might wake up and realize i don't want to be this person anymore and I, if I were you, I would hold a hard line. Again, repeat my, you know, I'd repeat that like you are there to be her friend, but only if she's willing to do the right thing. And that includes helping herself and figure out why she has this type of destructive behavior. Also, you can't ever force someone to go to therapy, but something I've done for a lot of friends is be like, send me your health insurance info. Like, I will find you some providers who are accepting new patients who take mm -hmm. your health insurance because it can, there could be all this friction of like, okay, mm -hmm. I should go to therapy, but then it's not like as, you know, it's so fucking easy yeah. to buy a pair of shoes on Instagram, but like there's yeah. so many barriers to do the things that are like helpful. And so I think an like another way that you could potentially help out is just by taking away another point of friction, even though... You know, of course, she's the only one who can make that choice for herself. You wake up every day yeah. and you tell her that you love her. And like Amanda said, you're like, how, you know, what do you need from me? I, I'm here to help. You know, let's get a mm -hmm. therapist, whatever, you know. And just like, it's not too late. Like There's more choices to be made and she can redeem herself. I'm sorry you're going through this. I, I know it's scary. Um, if you need a pep talk, let us know. I, might. I will definitely update you because there's a lot that we have to sort through. But. One area that I'm confident about is I know my boyfriend and I, when I explain it to him, I know he'll understand and I know he won't hold it against me. Like, I just, I just know it. I would still tell <laughs> him sooner or later. This situation, I'm still going to tell him, yeah. but that's like the one area that I'm not that worried about. Um, it just all depends. It all depends what he learns. I'm telling you, when you, you get that seed of doubt planting in your head, you know, and all of a sudden he starts worrying about what, you know. And again, you're, you seem to be handling it the right way and, you know, you're collecting your thoughts and you can be like, I literally went on a podcast and, you know, so yeah, I, I think know. you're fine because you clearly, your conscious bothered you and you've been like sorting through mm -hmm. it the past few days. But like, if he ever were to found out that you just kind of, you know, let's say a month goes by and you're just yeah. like, you try to pretend it didn't happen and then he finds out and then he tells your boyfriend, very different conversation you two are having. Yeah, that's that was one of my worries. Or like, it, I don't think I would have been able to do it. But it's like, what if he finds out while well, we're on the trip? Or what if he finds out right before the trip? It's just like, there was all these things going through my mind. It's like, this needs to be resolved way before we even get there. Like, I can't even let it get there. Is I just... Oh, you have to do I it guess. by tomorrow, by Monday. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it on Monday. Just things go better with her in person. Like, she doesn't have the option to hang up. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. she's very avoidant. So if I Either started, way, she'd just be like, I'm not doing this right now, but I feel like if it's in person, just remember the, if you don't, I will, the, I will is very important. Ultimatum. Yeah. I'm not an ultimatum girl, but I think this is an exception. And also in person, you can hand her tissues. You can rub her back. If she's like someone who would feel comfortable with that. Like you can also be yeah. there like to support her more in person. Yeah, we'll get through this. I'm here by your side. I love you. This is fucked up. You are so much better than this. I'm doing this because I believe in you and I love you and I, I want you to figure your shit out because you're only hurting yourself and you're hurting other people we care about and this isn't okay mm -hmm. and we'll fucking get through this. But like, you're going to do the right thing here and I'm going to, as your friend, make sure you do it. So please just fucking tell him. Please don't make me do it, but I 100% will. Yeah. I like saying, please don't make me do it, but I will because that's like, I don't, want this yeah. <laughs> like you're giving me no choice and give her a few days basically. give her a few days to think about it whatever and i you know like i don't know what I'll she give her could a timeline like if you don't tell him in a week or something like a week maybe i don't like, know I don't a few know. days whatever <laughs> I mean, a week's too long don't give her too much time to like come up with some machiavellian yeah. like you know i mean honestly she just needs to sleep on it for one night because either way you're going to tell him so she needs she needs 24 hours to build up the courage 
and accept the fact that our life's about to drastically change. So, you know, two or three days or whatever. But other than that, you're just wasting everyone's time. I feel like this pit in my stomach will go away after this is done, though. For sure. You will 100% feel better. I don't know how it will go, but you will feel better. Your conscience will be clean, and hopefully your friend will be on a path to healing. And, you know, be proud of yourself that you're willing to be by your side, because not everyone would be. Thank you for calling in. I'm sorry you're going through this. It fucking sucks. Just, you don't have to air this if you don't want, but like, so I've been studying psychology for six years now and I'm almost done and I'm going to be a therapist when I'm done. Congrats. This sounds kind of silly, but I listen to your podcast and like pretend that your callers are my like potential clients. That's awesome. (laughs) And I like listen to these situations and wonder like, what would I say if someone like came in and was saying this to me? And your responses are really good. Obviously, like, you have an amazing career. I'm sure you're not going to change careers, but if you ever wanted to, you should think about it because I've thought you about are it. Good I, at it. I'm going back to school for therapy. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my god, that makes me so happy because honestly, I, I don't know yet, if you just read a lot. So, no, if you I, read a lot, or if you have a lot of experience. I have experience. Like maybe as a client, it's a bit instinctual, but I've also lived a, mm. some life and I've dealt with these situations and I've had to learn the hard way and I've processed these emotions and I've had therapy and combination of all those yeah. things yeah i can tell that you're like well read or at least have a lot of experience as like a client in therapy because i can just tell by your responses i'm like i feel like school will be a breeze for you because half of it you're already basically doing but. yeah we'll see yeah but it's something i've actually talked with my therapist about in the past couple months so <laughs> well thank you for calling in thank you for saying that uh don't let me down uh and don't okay. don't let your teachers down there's just no <laughs> I know. That's why I'm like, I can't believe I'm in this situation. Like, I should. It's hard. It's hard. It's so hard. <laughs> it it's hard what you're it's going It's harder when it's your own feelings instead yeah. of someone else's feelings. Exactly. Yeah. It's, you know, these are I real, these are real life situations and emotions. And, and then, like I said, they affect lives. You know, this isn't like, just, yeah. you know, this is a big fucking deal. I actually have to take advice and not give it for once. So yeah. I guess I have to practice what I preach. You're going to be fine. You'll get through it. Yeah. You'll feel better for it. And then. We, we we must have an update. I, I, I mean, I'm sure it'll be, because I'm going to have to sort out this trip and everything, but I'd say maybe, I, do you want me to update you after my conversation? Oh, with her? I was actually yeah. going to say, we, well, we'll, yeah. we'll be emailing you on Tuesday because you're going to do it on Monday. <laughs> oh or on Wednesday, if that's okay. <sighs> okay. I'll, I'll, we can even like set up a time ahead of time as an added like accountability measure of like, you will, we'll have an update thing on Wednesday. I am fully invested <laughs> in this. I will oh not gosh. fully sleep until I have known that you have done the right thing. I, this yeah, is, this I literally is, feel like I'm this in a movie personal for me. You're now. the main character. You are <laughs> right now. I'm the main character. I'm going through like the worst part of the movie. It's fine. Yeah. I'm almost out with the other what side. What if? What if? I mean, he's probably not. But what if? What if he's shopping for rings to propose to her on this trip? He's not. I know. I know he's not, but I know that he is starting to look at homes. There and I literally said, because they currently rent, and I literally jokingly said to him, but like dead serious, you better not put her name on that deed. No. <laughs> I literally said that to him. Don't ever put her name on that. So any Ooh. moment he's experiencing or he's thinking about his future with her is, is something that he's going to have to process and get over. So the sooner he finds out, the less amount of those moments he'll have to deal with. Saving two lives because I'm probably saving his wallet at least. At the least. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe your friend can get help. But I would uh, insist time. on therapy. I will definitely be insisting on therapy whether or not it's received. It won't probably be received at first, but you got to stay on it. You know? We often like, you know, and I'm as guilty as anyone, you know, so like talk about therapy, but until, until you're in therapy and we often treat therapy is like reconstructive surgery when we should treat therapy like a bicycle helmet or a seatbelt. And mm-hmm. unfortunately for your friend, sure. it's more like reconstructive surgery, but it'll only get worse for her and she'll only do more damage to herself and others until she does. So I hope you stay on it. Yeah. All I right. think I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to have to work myself up. Probably talk to myself in the mirror, but you can do I don't this. Really have a choice. You can do this. And you guys are holding me accountable anyway. So yes. now I yeah. really we'll talk to, to you it. on Wednesday about how it goes. I'm personally oh invested. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Hopefully, hopefully I'm feeling better on Wednesday. Uh, well, it's going to get ugly for a while. It's okay. It will. It's, it's okay. All right. Good luck. Talk soon. Thanks. Okay. All right.
Okay. Bye bye. Back to you, Raven. Is there anything while we were uh, talking to our our lovely caller? Um, that was that so interesting. Maybe popped in your head of of any other information that you find that the audience might appreciate hearing. I really want people to take away from this, like the relatability of this story. And I know there's so many like crazy parts of it. You know, like we were on Love Is Blind, right? But um, I think a lot of people go through similar things where they just don't listen to themselves and you have an idea of someone or a situation in your head and you really want it to work yeah and it probably speaks more you know it speaks a little bit about you too but you know i want people to see like i recognize i could have done things a lot differently yeah they're like a lot of my critics would say like, oh, you did it for plotties, like whatever. And part of me is like, okay, like, I'm sorry, I have a job that I love and I'm passionate about. And like, okay, I did some jumping jacks in a pod, like sue me. Well, but also like if if there was, if this was some sort of plan that you were a part of, like wh- where do you look good in yeah, this? Where do I, where do I look good in this? I mean, like this fundamentally changed my life. Like, I have no other way to describe it. Like, I will never date again the same way. I will, I've lived my life so differently now. Were there any red flags yeah. that y- you could talk about that mm-hmm. you chose in the, in the, at the time to ignore mm-hmm. that maybe for our listeners could, yeah. could uh, hey, if this was a red flag, I ignored it, but I should have known yeah. that. So there's some funny ones and there's some not so funny ones. <laughs> I'll start with like some of the funny ones because they all kind of tie into themselves. But I think my first real red flag moment was um, in February. So this was, we wrapped in July. We wrapped in July, August, September, October, November. Things start to, we start seeing each other December, whatever. February, I go to San Francisco. I think that was my first time going. He had come to see me a few times. So I go to San Francisco. Like, we're serious, but we're being realistic. We're not, like, official, 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 right? We don't move in together until July. So this is in February. And uh, he had gone to school. I was trying to take a shower. I was looking for a towel. And I open the cabinet under the sink, and there's all this stuff shoved in there. And I see a towel and I pull the towel out and it was like bunched up. But I was like, maybe it's clean. You know, guys are dirty. Um, So I pull it out. And there's makeup all over the towel and hair all over the towel. And I was like, that's weird. And so I put it back in there. But I knew in my head, we're not uh, we're not officially dating. So it's fine. It's not cheating. That was not my issue. So eventually he comes back, whatever, and we're talking. And I'm like, hey, you know, we're talking about our relationship, Mm -hmm. actually. And um, I'm like, hey, you know, I do want to bring this up. I did find this towel under the sink, blah, blah, blah. Again, long, 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 long pause. And I knew in the pit of my stomach right there, this isn't going to be good. And he goes and gets the towel and he's like, now, mind you, there's hair on the towel. Girls know. How does it look when you wash your face with that towel? Disgusting. Mm-hmm. It's not just tan. It's mascara. Yes. Yeah. There's lip stuff involved. Lit. It goes brown, pink, black. Duh. We all know that, right? He's like, <laughs> this is a funny one. Because, yeah, I know. He goes, I did a turmeric face mask. Sir. <laughs> What? <laughs> First of all, a turmeric face mask. Is that real? <laughs> he thought he had you with he like giving you specifics. Yeah. And I'm like, but SK, first of all, there's hair on it. There's black stuff. There's mascara. Like, I'm a girl. I know what that towel is for real. And why did she put it under the sink? Because she didn't know what to do and she got makeup all over it. No, 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 no. Lies about it, right? And again, it's not, it was not cheating, but what it was, was lying that should have been my first and i felt it in my heart immediately when he took 20 minutes to answer me in front of my face 
I should have known this is someone who will lie through his teeth to try to make you believe it based off of who he knows you think you're with. And so I, I just believed it, you know? And of course I didn't believe it, of course. But I, yeah, I wanted to believe yeah, yeah. it. I wanted to believe it. And that was the first sign of... What colors is he seeing on... Now, is that a turmeric face mask? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm, it was tan. That's yellow. It was tan. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, not the picture. Just wondering what he thought. But again, people are going to listen to this and be like, oh, girl, you." and you're right. I should have. But also this leads to, and this is like the part that was also really hard for me. Um, there were other several times. I mean, there was even one time quite recently within the past, like, four-ish, five-ish months where he accidentally sent me a girl's picture on Instagram. He's like, what a mediocre photo. You're so yeah, beautiful. Yeah, like, you, what, literally, yeah, well, well, you should try this makeup trend, babe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or like, oh, you should She's get not this. as hot as you. And, and it's funny you say that because there was always this trend of, and it's hard because I'm, this is a part that I'm still processing, and it's probably the ego inside of me. But there was always this trend of him being really hard on the way that I looked. And it got to the point in August, actually, that I was so upset. Like, we had basically lived together the entire summer. We had had our apartment. And anything I would wear, it was just always something. And it, it just the way it made me feel. And then sending the picture of this, it was always these girls that looked nothing like me, the opposite. On top of the fact, oh, you shouldn't wear that. Oh, I don't like when you do your face like that. Oh, and I was so sad. And I even started to say to him, like, you know, I feel like something's up. You don't really like me. You don't like the way that I look. Like, something is off. I'm not getting the same vibes. I've, like, to be honest, I've dated a ton of men who've only dated me for the way that I look. Sure, I'm sure a lot of girls do that. And it was just always so negative. And I kept feeling that over and over and over and over and over and over. And then when all of these girls came out and more of the critics were like, Raven, like, you know, he doesn't even like girls that look like you. He, he, he never liked you to begin with. And I'm like, little do y'all know that that was something that I kept bringing up because it just felt so like, I don't know. He just really what. I felt I knew that something was off. No, I'm sorry I had to go through that. No, I know. And it's, I thank it's you. Hindsight 2020. Yeah. It's, it's easy to be hard on yourself yeah. and it's easy to say that, but like, you know, we, we do have egos and we do like, yeah. we want the people we love to like treat us well. And like, I, I'm sure everyone in this room has, has, instead of listening to your gut or or recognizing that you're with someone who's not making you feel good about yourself, yeah. you decided to use that as a way to challenge yourself and, mm -hmm. and prove to yourself that you, you were enough. It's a painful lesson to learn. It is a painful, like, I want people to take from that, like, and it goes much deeper, you know, like in the end, he basically admitted it, like said like, yeah, I'm not, a, you're not my type, I'm not attracted to you. And I was like, well, good to know um but like you said like you don't have to do that you don't have to convince yourself like i was convincing myself that that doesn't matter uh, I, i'm with someone he's so smart he's so intellectual he likes me for other reasons like and as someone who maybe in the, like you said you you've been someone who it's been the opposite where yeah. people you almost felt like people were dating you for yeah. your looks um you know we all remember batista or Batiste or whatever. Bartiz. Bartiz, whatever the fuck. Batista. Maybe we don't remember. Barista. 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 <laughs> That's funny. It wasn't the whole internet not getting his name wrong. Someone, no, oh, whoever we had I'm, on to recap it was saying that their mom referred to him as Barista. Yeah. I think that was part of our episode, sure. which is probably what you're thinking of. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and so I can only imagine maybe like in a weird way, you were like, oh, like, I'm, 
someone likes me for different reasons. Or yes. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. You know, yeah. yeah this I, is why he's a good guy because yeah. he's not worried because he's about not superficial. Like he's not, you know. And so it played into the whole story and the whole narrative in yeah. my head. This is why I'm with this. That kind of stuff isn't important to him. Little did I know that it actually is just not with me. Um, so like I said, just it, not ignoring the feelings. Yeah, when it feels off. It when it is. feels yeah. off, it's off. And it's okay to bring that up, you know? And sometimes you're going to get lied to. Like, I lied, like, it's fine. But if you're willing to be open and vulnerable and listen to yourself, like, like there's no other way that I would want to go through my love journey just doing it a hundred percent you know well i think that's a, a good spot to wrap up yeah. uh raven i can't thank you enough for for coming here and sharing yeah. your story and being vulnerable and sharing everything you have shared and uh, it's not easy to do and yeah. i know this hasn't been a fun experience for you <laughs> but it sounds like uh you're better for it mm -hmm. and it sounds like you're gonna um you know, you've already learned from it. Sounds like you're maybe even a, a good spot with a, a new person and yeah. that's exciting. We wish you nothing but the best, whether it's with that person or just in general. Thank you. And uh, I think I say it for a lot of people in this room and the people listening, we're all rooting for you. Oh my God, thank you. And um, I think we're, I think you're going to be just fine. I will. I think you're, <laughs> you're, you're going to be crushing life. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget, as always, to send in those questions at asknick at thevilefiles.com. I think that's it. Don't forget to check out Better Date Than Never uh, every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. We will see you there. Ah, uh, we're not done yet. Get ready for one more excellent texting office hour. How's it going? Hi, my name is Isabella. I'm 25 years old, and I'm wondering if I killed the momentum of a relationship with someone by setting too many boundaries up front at once. Okay. Well, what was the boundary or boundaries that you set up uh, with that person? So the boundaries included um, kind of taking a pause on the fast texting and like the intense FaceTimes and the times to hang out. Um, Basically, I moved to a new city, was excited to be on the apps and in the new place I'm in. Um, definitely, notoriously, a, a definitely piggy person when it comes to people um, and when it comes to bringing new people into my life. So I definitely chased after the fun butterflies and the type of people that like kind of like skip you down the street. And so with this person I met, it was one of those things that sounds crazy where it's like, oh, I feel like I've known you forever. So we started off FaceTiming and kind of that solidified my reasoning. I was like, I do want to meet you in person. Um, it was going really well. And then it was just hit me one day after work where I was like, this just feels overwhelming because it's coming from the wrong person. Like I would want all these things if it was coming from someone who like really kept me excited. Um, so essentially I had a talk with him after our second date. It was literally a week within knowing him. So long story short, the conversation went great. Like I literally told him while we were lying in bed that like, I feel like there's so much weight lifted off of my shoulders and, um, I just felt really good. And so for like the month or two to follow after that, maybe like a month, um, it was a lot of me initiating and me being like, Oh, Hey, like want to FaceTime or do you want to go out? And I met his friends and I would go over to his place and like it was a lot of going out and a great momentum, but it was basically being met where I was. I, I literally told this guy to his face, like, I don't want you to text me. Like, I don't want you to FaceTime me. Like, you're not it for me um, in certain ways. And so it's like, I can't really sit here and expect to have him text me. Essentially, I really wanted to like check in with him um, after that week from Thanksgiving and just say, hey, like, I feel like I came on really strong in the beginning with my boundaries and I'm still not sure what I'm looking for. This person was also really receptive again, definitely like a really good experience. And so then just like weeks to follow, we're good. And then, um, and just kind of felt quiet. And that was really frustrating to me. Like I, I communicated with him when I rechecked in of like, Hey, like, can you please let me know when things change for you? Like the worst thing that I've done, like been the situations of like trying to figure out like the change in energy um, and why, and, and not necessarily why as much, but like, okay, like I don't mind making the first move, but like, if you don't want to be there, like, I don't want to be like making a fool of myself. And so I just ultimately like to current day, 
became disappointed with the person he ended up showing. Like he came off as this person who was really receptive to communication and like really in the same headspace as me. And it felt great. And I was like, wow, like this is the first experience like this. And like, this is what I want to continue to look for. Um, but super disappointing to like learn that like his communication styles, like weren't exactly what he was showing. And it wasn't like a year long thing. It was only like a two months, like maybe a little more than two months stint. But um, essentially, like, I, I feel like I, I tried to like, I basically was like, hey, I'm still interested, like around New Year's. And he didn't really like respond to that and kind of just noted that like, hey, like I'm busy. I'm not 100% sure what I want. Um, he gave you the, I'm not sure what he wants. I'm not sure. He was like, I sent him a text on New Year's Day and I was like, hey, like, happy new year. And I was just trying to like be cute. And I was like, I hope you're coming into my 2023. Um, and he was just like, happy new year. And like completely disregarded that message. I sent him something else like unrelated a couple of days later. And then he was like, respond to that. And then like acknowledge, he's like, sorry, like, I know I've been distant. Like I'm busy with work, which is such a frustrating excuse. And I'm not hundred percent sure what I want. Um, yeah, it's like the kiss and of I death. was like, I'm busy with work. Kiss of death. And <laughs> I was like, that's fine. Like, I'm not sure what I want. Like, what what frustrated me the most is that I'm not looking for anything either right now, but I'm I'm not, it's like, you don't want to date someone who doesn't want to date you. Like, I don't want to spend time with someone who doesn't want to spend time with me. Like, I have other people in my life to fill those roles. Um, so it's frustrating. And I I I didn't I don't find myself angry, but I definitely find myself like just disappointed. If you thought you did anything wrong, what would it be? Just you thought you were being too direct? Not too direct, but like maybe just too strong where it's like, you know, but like at the same time, it's, it's almost more like I, when I think about it, it's more an attractive. And I feel like the guys I've kind of been with have done this a lot where it's like, they just like throw all their emotions at once, And it's like frustrating to me because like, I didn't go all at once and I, it was a little bit for like a week it was. And then I put a stop because like, this is just too much. Um, and like, you know, we're not in like second grade and then like all of a sudden it's like, then they stop the interest and it's like, well then with time, like I become interested and it's like, then I feel like the dumb one. It's like, oh, how did I, it's like, sure. sometimes I feel like they make me feel dumb for having caught feelings. But it's like, I feel like I caught feelings in the appropriate mature way, which was through time. Whereas like you were just obsessed with like the new shiny object. I don't feel like you did anything wrong. I think it just yeah. didn't play out the way you hoped. Yeah. You know, and um, then when that happens, then, you know, our egos kind of speak up and mm -hmm. make us feel shitty and, and things like that. I think all you did is protect yourself and set some boundaries and you slowed mm -hmm. the pace down at a pace that you were comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, like, because the alternative, like you said, would be to, and maybe you have done this in the past, which is, you know, kind of buy into his enthusiasm and his excitement and his mm. kind of you know wanting to text all day and then reading in to his enthusiasm and his mm -hmm. kind of his over communication as you know oh he's obsessed with me or he loves me only for him to eventually pull away like he did i i don't i'm not getting a sense that he pulled away because you set some rigid boundaries early on and now mm -hmm. he is you know mad at you or frustrated you i mean like i don't know if you're gonna like my answer but my answer is like he maybe just lost interest or maybe mm -hmm. in the time in which you were hanging out because you weren't exclusive and you weren't boyfriend and girlfriend you were still probably he was probably almost certainly still in the apps and still swiping and still going on dates and maybe just connected with someone that he was a little bit more interested in than you and you know and that's just dating and you're probably yeah. a little bit more upset than you would be otherwise because, you know, you're like, motherfucker, I thought I was in control this whole time. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think that's what it comes down to. Part of it. Yeah. So you did, um, we just have to be careful not to question our, our choices just because it doesn't necessarily work out the way we hoped or, we f or, or more importantly, just because we lose a little power that we thought we had and let our egos kind of get activated and things like that. But. I don't know, the way you're telling the story, it sounds like you had a pretty healthy approach to this particular guy, there's this particular situation. Yeah, and I guess, like, what I also feel like I've struggled with, it's like, when there is, like, I, I feel like the flip of a switch, like, happens really frequently, like, especially, like, in this, like, dating agent, like, I am in one of, like, the largest cities, so it's, like, 
there's a million options. So people just do lose like interest out of the blue. Um, but it's like the balance and like the fine line of like, okay, like I don't ever want to wonder what if, like, if you like, I don't know, like I, I just like specifically, I think with him, sometimes my mind goes to like, well, like, again, maybe he's still operating off of like the blueprint that I set like two over two months ago. Of, like, I don't really want you to text me. Like, I don't want you to reach nah. out. I'm like, what if, no, nah. <laughs> you don't think so. Okay. Cause you, Cause you, I just you, don't you, you put your, you, you put yourself out there on new yeah. year's day, you know, the sweet flirty text. If he really felt rejected by your boundary, only for you to give him the opportunity to continue to hang out with him. You know, as time goes on, you show a little bit more interest and a little bit more interest. And then you have this like flirty text and he'll put yourself in his shoes. If yeah. it was the other way around, you really think that would have turned you off or do you, I think it would have been the other way around. So I yeah, think, no, that's true. I think he just, I think he just lost interest for whatever reason. And mm -hmm. we can sit there and debate what the reason is. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, I, 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 I don't think you should doubt yourself. It sounds like you did a pretty good job. I don't know. Raven, do you have any questions or anything you want to add? I was thinking the same thing, that probably in the time span of you being like, eh, you're not my person, you know, he was probably like, swipe, swipe, click, click, or let me set up a few more dates. Like, I would do the same thing. And then there was probably someone else on the app that was like oh my god i love you you know and it's yeah. way easier to it's just easier and so then when you changed not changed her mind but you know then it was like mm -hmm. but but i wouldn't i wouldn't like again like question your decisions yeah. because you still made yourself available again my like mm -hmm. and i really even even you saying i mean i don't know this guy and maybe he's healthier than i was or i am but when some you know Usually when someone's like, you're not my person if I'm into them and they give me an opportunity to keep hanging out with them, I, I, my ego's a little bit like, well, let me show you that I could, you know what I'm saying? I rise, I want to, I just a challenge, you know? And you certainly mm -hmm. gave him the opportunity to prove you wrong by continuing to hang out with him. You know, mm -hmm. it's, I'm just, you know, ultimately just, you know, he just lost interest or, you know, I, I just don't think you have anything to have a regret about, you know? Okay. No, thank you. And and that's the thing. It's like, maybe, maybe I set these boundaries and then I didn't ultimately hold them for myself. Cause like, I found myself being like, oh, like let's FaceTime and, and doing all that. Um, and kind of like speeding it up on, on my terms. But yeah, I mean, the bottom line is like, I, I don't. I think you're nitpicking. Your, I think you're being too hard on yourself, yeah. you know? Yeah. Cause ultimately your boundary just was, let's just slow down a little bit, you know? And, yeah. and I, I think more, I think what, I think it'd, it'd be healthier for you to pat yourself on the back by recognizing that this guy early on was coming on a little too strong and it was a little too inauthentic and it probably like triggered some things in the past of other guys doing the same bullshit only to like, and you were just like, Hey, let's slow down, man. You know? Yeah. And maybe you just, again, like you, nitpicking, but you could have just maybe instead of saying you're not my person and being too rigid, but I really don't think that made, I don't think, Mm -hmm. I think that's the semantics because he mm -hmm. kept hanging out with you. He was, mm -hmm. you know, he made efforts. It's just over a couple months, he just lost interest, you know, and decided like, just not what he wanted. And yeah, probably, probably met someone else uh, that he decided to put a little bit more energy in. And, yeah. but so, I, I think if he really was liking what he was getting out of this thing, he would have been totally down. He just, you know, yeah. Decided to so you don't ever answer. think it's worth to like try to figure out also like when there's like a change in energy like why no I guess probably not, not no yeah your yeah. ego wants to know but like what yeah. would what would be ego the difference like yeah you know it, yeah you I'm not hearing anything from you that you did something that would be like well if someone did that I wouldn't like them it sounds to me like maybe you just have different styles of not only dating, but trust. And I think that's something that I'm mm -hmm. learning as I date more too. It's, there are certain people, like it sounds like, like I know I am and it sounds like you and I might be similar where we don't just trust everyone automatically. You have to like build that and grow that. And then that happens as you get to know someone more and you're more attracted to them. There are other people that I've dated who it's just trust across the bo board until someone shows that they're not worthy of that trust. Or maybe they're like, well, mm -hmm. that jump the gun on that one, moving on. And I think maybe it was just a lack of compatibility between the two of you because you are the type of person where you're like, nope, got to earn this trust, got to earn this trust. 
seems like he was more willing to just kind of be like free with not only his trust, but his love. But then, yeah, if he gets a little hurt or bruised, then he's going to say, well, learn my lesson, moving on to the next person. So I just think it was kind of like ships passing in the night in a way. Yeah, it seems like almost like innocent until proven guilty yeah. is the approach that some people have. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, you're telling me you're guilty. OK, yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Moving on. Yeah, no, that's really valid. No, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, it's nice to hear that, like, I, I didn't blow up the situation. Like, I don't, like, part of me thought, like, did I blow it up? And like, you know, can I blow things up just from literally wanting to be honest and like putting a stop to like immature, like obsession, like, which is almost what it comes down to um, from the beginning. But I think if I he liked you, enough, I think if he liked you enough, yeah. he wouldn't have flaked on you. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Like, but any advice for going forward? I mean, that's like my biggest thing. Because I am dating him. Like, don't I've doubt. You know, don't 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 and... don't doubt. You. Yeah, my advice based off this call is don't doubt your choices yeah. just because things don't end okay. the way you want. Like that. Just because he ended up, you know, not reciprocating your interest at the end doesn't mean that you did something wrong. And mm-hmm. you read that as like, oh well, I I fucked up because he changed his mind. It's like maybe he just lost interest a little bit or maybe the interest was never that strong between either of you. And yeah. your disappointment in an ending has more to do with the fact that like, you know, he called it quits before you did. It's always so easy. Anytime someone breaks up with you or ends things like anytime it's taken out of your control, I automatically go to I was in love with them. Especially and when you thought you had goes, the power. No, you yeah. hated him. Like just because he ended things doesn't mean it was love. <laughs> and most of this mm-hmm. relationship sounds like you were at least you felt in control. Mm-hmm. And when you lose that, uh, it fucks with you a little bit. No, that's straight on. It's a hard pill to swallow, but um, it's for yeah. sure straight on. But yeah, oh. if if there's enough chemistry there or interest, some like people find a way to, you know, you know, mm-hmm. when Natalie and I started dating, she definitely pursued me early on, and she, um, I try to slow things down, but like I definitely was guilty when she would, uh, I guess, listen to my boundaries, so to speak, using your language, and and you know, I would be like a couple days later, be like. What? What what, uh, what you doing? You know, like I liked her. You know, I just was hesitant, and I had my reservations. You know what I'm saying? But like the interest was there, and we kept, you know, with her and I, we just kept, despite, you know, uh, our age difference or the fact that we lived across the country, and we kind of had all these reasons to like, especially we communicated our hesitations and and things like that. We always, we always kept finding our way back to each other. And you guys didn't keep finding your way back to each other. And that just maybe means that it wasn't as, it wasn't there and that's okay. But I wouldn't use that as a reason to doubt yourself because it sounds like to me you had, you you approached this in a fairly healthy way and almost certainly protected yourself from greater disappointment because had you not set that boundary and just bought all the things he said and started, you know, talking to your girls, being like, oh my God, is this like, He's texting me every day and he's like asking me all these questions and like, he's the definition of if he wanted to, he would, and this is great. And then, and then he did the same thing he did on New Year's Eve. You would be distraught and upset and, and feel manipulated and lied to. And you, maybe you'd be calling him a narcissist or a love, you know what I'm saying? And now you're just kind of slightly annoyed. I guess one last thing too, like, I mean, I don't, I have no, I, I don't plan on reaching out to him, but like, if he was to reach out to me, like obviously parts of me, it's like, if I I was invested. I was interested. Like, yeah, I would want to see you again, but I also feel like probably the best thing is to not. Like, I, I, guess, I think that's I just know, a like, conversation you need to have with yourself about why yeah. would I be saying yes? Would I be saying yes because he's giving me an opportunity to regain power in this situation, or am I genuinely mm-hmm. interested in him? And I don't have the answer. And I don't think there's a wrong yeah. answer. I don't think it's wrong to hang out with him again and just feel it out because, yeah, maybe he did lose interest because he met someone else only to go on a couple of dates with her and, and be like, eh, she kind of sucks. I kind of miss, you know, uh, the girl I was hanging out with before. So, you know, it all depends. But if you're just like, once you realize, once the dust settles and you're just like, I don't really miss him. I don't really care. I just was, I'm kind of annoyed that he's the one who ended it before I did, you know? And so you just have yeah. to ask yourself what, what's that answer and, and go from there. You just just no, try to be on, just try to take your ego out of it and try to be honest with yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I wish I wasn't still interested to like hang out with him again, but I feel like with time that only will just like diminish. But like I wish I could just easily like 
move on and move over someone. And what's like, the thing? What if you miss them? What's the, what's something you miss about them? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's the just like uh, I mean, I would have hate of being wanted. I don't know. And, maybe is not a way you would want. To, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe let me come up with something. That's you know true. what I'm saying? Like that's doesn't true. like yeah. Yeah. If you really missed him, you'd be like, well, I don't know. I just, I really loved that he, we did. Like, I really miss that we would do X, yeah. Y, or Z, or I missed the way he yeah. made me feel. Like, you were trying yeah. to come up with something when I asked that question. So, <laughs> maybe that's my answer. Yeah, maybe. Well, thank you. All right. I, I'm very great to get the advice, and I'm super excited to have finally go on the show. So thanks again. Well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate you uh, checking out the book. Uh, hopefully, you found it helpful. But yeah, I think just keep doing what you're doing. Take your take your time, mm -hmm. and you know, it sounds yeah. like you're doing good things. Maybe in the future, next time you set a boundary, just you know, you don't have to say things like "I know you're not my person." You could just be like, "Let's just slow down a little bit." You know, let's just, mm -hmm. you know. As easy as we, that. We yeah. don't need to text all day long to get to know each mm -hmm. other. You know, we mm -hmm. can yeah. we, we can spread yeah. it out. You know, yeah, and just adults. Yeah. yeah. All right. Agreed. Well, thanks again. All right. We'll take care, day, everyone. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye.